But as we move on, just to note, dear viewers, that uh, these particular uh, track and field events will be very, very interesting because most of the uh, athletes who are uh, who have dropped out of the Diamond Leagues uh, or some of the races that have been dropped out of the Diamond League then will be comprised uh, in this uh, particular event. But right now, as we fix our sound issues here in Eldoret, I want to take you to my colleague Aida Waringa, who's standing by at Aria the House. Aida. Fantastic. Yes, a very good morning to you, Lois. And indeed, it is the inaugural edition of the World Athletics Continental Tour. As you've said, it is coming to Nairobi. So, you know, for a lot of people out there, they might be asking themselves just what exactly is the World Athletics Continental Tour? As I've said, it is in it is in its inaugural edition. And I'm sure whether a sports fan or not, you might have heard of the term, the IAAF, or now World Athletics Diamond League. Well, the World Athletics Continental Tour is the second tier of global elite athletics track and field events that happen over one day in specific cities across the world. So exactly what was supposed to happen is that uh, this Nairobi edition was supposed to open up the season. That was to be in May. But of course, as you might guess, the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic ravaged the whole world and indeed the sports industry. So what happened is uh, this edition of uh, the Nairobi Kipkeino Classic, as it is being called, has been put to close off the season. We have seen the World Athletics Continental Tour happen across various cities, um, you know, the likes of Tokyo that will be hosting the Tokyo Olympics, the Summer Games coming up in 2021. So it's a lot that's happening. And of course, NTV will have those exclusive rights that will be on 3rd October and don't forget on 4th October the next day will be the London Marathon so indeed it will be an action-packed weekend another thing Lois is uh, that for this World Athletics Continental Nairobi edition it is listed on the gold level of uh, this particular series tour that's a really really big deal uh, a lot of big stars will be making their way over to Nairobi it will be at the Nyayo National stadium we will see the likes of you know um sofian albacal who is uh you know quite something when it comes to the 3000 meters steeple chase and actually on top of that as well lois is the fact that um the world athletics continental tour will feature a lot of events that you know might necessarily have been cut off from uh the top tier which is the diamond league and on you know topmost of uh, those events has to be that 3,000 meter steeple chase of which Kenya has been famed for over the last couple of decades. So a lot happening, uh, a lot happening as well. We are looking forward to the 3rd and 4th of October and we are hoping that it, it indeed will be Let's Go Kenya. As we always say, where so many things divide, Lois, sport really unites and we know one thing in particular that unites Kenyans is athletics. Thank you, thank you, my colleague at the Aida Waringa. I must note she's very, very good in matters sports. Rotichi, hope it'll be equally good. Eh? <laughs> anyway, before that technical hitch, we were just looking uh, at the naming of this particular classic and how it goes to bring a lot of motivation when it comes to athletes in the country and definitely uh, the whole country as we look forward to the Kipkeno Classic. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Rotichi. As I was saying, uh, the, the, the name after Kipchoge, Keno. One, everybody wants to participate in because this is something that's happening for the first time in, in Kenya. You're right. And this, uh, maybe it will be the last event, maybe because it's a world tour. And uh, everybody wants to be associated with Kip Kano because mm -hmm. you remember Kip Kano is a legend name. He's a legend athlete, so right. everybody wants to be there. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and this particular uh, event comes at a time where a number of races that were struck out of the Diamond League will be captured in this particular classic. Are we expecting to see a vigorous uh, participation from the big names here in the country? Yeah, uh, of course, uh, many, many people will want to participate, and uh, especially when we talk about maybe steeplechase. Steeplechase is, is being loved across uh, East Africa. And uh, if I can tell you, mm -hmm. even the Ethiopians now are very good in, in, uh, in the steeplechase mm -hmm. race. So we'll be, people will be keen to watch uh, maybe Conceslas competing with uh, 
with the Ugandans and mm -hmm. with the Ethiopians mm -hmm. who will want maybe to outdo Kenyans in their home. Homeland. Right. But I, mm -hmm. I don't think if consensus will agree to, to be beaten at home. Mm -hmm. So it's something that it will be a, a, a very, a, it's a good race that mm -hmm. what people will want to, to watch. It's unfortunate that because it's happening when the coronavirus is still yeah. on. Yeah, and so but, there'll be a lot of but, corona protocols. Yeah, but yeah. of course, Nyaya Stadium could mm -hmm. have been full to the brim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, another race that will be captured here is the 10,000 uh, men's race. There's this uh, athlete called Jacob Kiplimo from the neighboring country. He says he will be using it to ensure he captures a seat uh, when the Olympics come in. What do we look forward when it comes to this uh, race and Team Kenya for the men? Yeah, uh, talking about maybe Jacob Kiplimo, mm -hmm. he'll be the star to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll, he, he, personally, he told me that he'll be participating in the 10,000 meters mm -hmm. and uh, he'll be using the race to maybe qualify for the Olympic Games next year. And uh, if you watched, if you, if you watched uh, Kiplimo for in the past two races, he mm -hmm. has done very well. He ran in the 5,000 meters and mm -hmm. he ran also in the 3,000 meters mm -hmm. race uh, just the other day in Rome. So he'll be here again competing with the Kenyans in the 10,000 meters race and mm -hmm. we hope of course, I know he, maybe he'll do the be his best and maybe he'll be in the podium. Mm -hmm. Maybe he'll be in the podium. We don't know if there's anybody else who will beat him, but we pray for that Kenyans also beat him yeah, because he'll be, he'll be, they, they, they'll be participating, they'll be competing at yeah. home. Mm -hmm. yes. We also expect that the Javelin events will also take place uh, on October the 3rd during the Kipkeno Classic. What sort of uh, picture are we looking into? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Maybe uh, talking of javelin, we have Mr. YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, Diego, yes. and of course, uh, mm -hmm. being out of the season for some time, mm -hmm. I know he has the energy maybe to throw some <laughs> few meters from uh, his personal best. Mm -hmm. Maybe that is, according to him, he wants to do his personal best. Yeah, right. So, and uh, that, of course, these athletes are using this thing, the, the, the event, mm -hmm. to prepare for the okay. Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. So, they'll be... There'll be a lot of mis mixed reactions and mixed results, so, mm -hmm. and we expect a good dress. Definitely a lot of excitement. It, yeah. yeah. Richie, you've spoken on matters preparation, and therein at times lies a lot of criticism when it comes to the kind of support we give our athletes during preparation. Uh, are we up to task this time? Are we doing things differently, even when it comes to sporting uh, infrastructure in the country? Uh, maybe in terms of prepare, preparations, uh, Kenyans like doing things at last minute. Mm -hmm. They want to rush things. Mm -hmm. And we are happy that Nyayo Nyayo Stadium is ready for use and mm -hmm. uh, the ministry has really done a good job. Mm -hmm. But they need to improve on that, in, in, especially in terms of facilities. Because right. these athletes need mm -hmm. those facilities so that they can train. Mm -hmm. If you go to Kipchoge Keno you know, right now, mm -hmm. it's under construction, but the track is being used mm -hmm. by the athletes in, because they are preparing for different and various races. Mm -hmm. Those who are going to London Marathon, they are using right now the track mm -hmm. for their speed session. Mm -hmm. So this thing has to be completed and has to be in good condition mm -hmm. for them to continue training yeah. and bagging these medals. Mm -hmm. Yes, Yes, and uh, I remember there's a story we did recently where, uh, was it Conceslas Kipruto? He was trying to put infrastructure uh, around his home to just try and uh, make preparation uh, a bit easy. Uh, we're looking into a situation where this thing will be dealt with once and for all and we give good infrastructure to athletes to ensure when it comes to such events, Kipkeno Classic, London Marathon also coming up, then they are at their optimum best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There is need. There is need to improve uh, the facility, as I, I had said mm -hmm. the other day. Concessionaire did his own. Uh, it, it's a, a school track, but mm -hmm. he used his resources to 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 con to, to grade the, mm -hmm. the, the 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 Maram service area mm -hmm. because that's where they're using because uh, they normally use it for speed work. It's very good for it's it's a good uh, mm -hmm. track is used for speed. Yeah. So and the athletes need that session. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Yeah. So uh, if we have good and f better facilities mm -hmm. where we don't have to be pushing the the ministry or the government to mm -hmm. do this thing, mm -hmm. then we'll we'll be we'll we'll do much better. Yeah. Remember, if you see uh, the performance of the Uganda. Mm -hmm. They are now coming up very mm -hmm. well. Quite strongly. It's because they have now been supported by the government. They, mm -hmm. they have good mm -hmm. facilities now. The, the, the government is giving them full support. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you win in Uganda or Ubaga a gold medal, you are, you, are, you, are, you are rewarded with a vehicle. Yeah. We need that motivation even here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even, uh, even, uh, even Kenyans are good, but mm -hmm. they need that motivation so that we can remain at the top. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And
countdown now begins officially towards the Kipkeno Classic. Another uh, interesting uh, event that will be happening in the field and track events is the 5,000 uh, meters for men. Uh, are we looking in, into a situation where we will also uh, be able to be champions on this particular race that has seemingly been challenging uh, Team Kenya when it comes to the men's side? Yeah, that's another event that we, I, th I think Kenya is losing because of, mm -hmm. uh, one, I think it's because of m many people are now shifting to the road races and yeah. we, have, we are getting good athletes going to the road races because of cash. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, this is going to, uh, Kenyans will pay dearly for this mm -hmm. because we need people at the track who will compete in the 5,000 meters. Mm -hmm. So going for the 5,000 meters mm -hmm. and uh, we will see mm -hmm. athletes from Ethiopia. At least from Uganda, they'll continue beating Kenyans mm -hmm. because we ha we don't nurture these five thousand meters uh, athletes. Mm -hmm. a athlete comes up and then he goes missing. Yeah. He doesn't stay at the top for some time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. we need to nurture that five thousand meters and mm -hmm. say no. These are the athletes that we need for the five thousand meters. Mm -hmm. Let's nurture these people. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we will. We will it, it takes time, mm -hmm. but it will bring a good result. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And when it comes to nurturing, uh, I, I, what I gather from explanation is that there could be a place of vacuum after some time because we, are, we uh, as a country, we are not focusing on transition when it comes to matters of athletics. So so we'll have these very, very big names, and then we'll have uh, a sort of vacuum before now we start nurturing the others. How important is it for us to ensure uh, that the big names that we have uh, keep uh, passing the buttons to the younger generation and in good time to ensure we don't feature in and out? Uh, this time we, we get a very good performance in 5,000 men, and then we stay for another like two to three years before we find our forte back. Yeah, yeah uh, and this now goes back to the federation. Mm -hmm. Federation has to take, make sure that we don't <coughs> we don't get uh, lost somewhere. Mm -hmm. They need to identify that this uh, maybe when they like last uh, two years ago we yeah. had the, 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 the world under twenty championships. Mm -hmm. We had very good youths who, mm -hmm. who bagged medals in in, in Finland. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you don't follow those youths mm -hmm. and uh, maybe help them transit uh, transit to to um, or. or mm -hmm. uh, they, 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 they go to the next step, yeah. there will be a gap in there. Mm -hmm. So the Federation has to be very careful mm -hmm. and come in and mm -hmm. help mm -hmm. and say, okay, Beatrice Chebet, you won gold in, 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 in Finland mm -hmm. in the World Under 20. You are now a senior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you need to be nurtured mm -hmm. to take over from mm -hmm. maybe Hel uh, Helen Obiri. Yeah. So that is how we will be able to get to, be, to remain at the top. Yes. But if we if don't work on those uh, mm -hmm. small modalities, mm -hmm. then there, 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 there will be a very big gap and yeah. we, Kenyans mm -hmm. will lose. Mm -hmm. It and will take more time even yeah. to nurture some more mm -hmm. other youths to take over. To take over. Yeah. And that means uh, when it comes to junior and upcoming athletes, uh, they tend most of the times not to have enough support as, uh, uh, as they should have. And granted, they are the champions of tomorrow. Is it a challenge to uh, perhaps the country and the Ministry of Sports to ensure uh, that for upcoming and junior athletes, a lot of support uh, is accorded? Did towards them. Yeah, there is mm -hmm. need to uh, there is need to support the, the junior because mm -hmm. these are still young athletes. They they, they, they don't know a lot uh, maybe in terms of maybe making money. Mm -hmm. This is where now the ministry has to collaborate with the with the, with the federation mm -hmm. and also the agent who or uh, managers who represent the athletes because yeah. these athletes have agents and uh, managers. Mm -hmm. So that's how we can be able to mm -hmm. get to 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 fill that gap yeah. so that the, the athletics ca can mm -hmm. be can be something continuous yeah. we don't mm -hmm. have to be uh, seeing someone in 5000 meters mm -hmm. and then for they, one, two, three yes, years. and then they get lost mm -hmm. we don't have someone who is doing well in that particular mm -hmm. race mm -hmm. so it takes time mm -hmm. we need to have someone mm -hmm. who will always see that there is a transition mm -hmm. smooth transition yes yeah and of course uh, this particular race if we could uh, just come back to the Kipkeno classic this is the seventh edition. Edition. We, uh, it's a world tour and this will be the seventh edition here in the country. Uh, just paint for us a picture how the editions have been, uh, the other six ones and what has come out of it uh, that is of interest uh, to the sporting uh, fraternity. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. maybe what I can talk about is maybe the, the Ostrava one where, where I saw Kiplimo, uh -huh. Kiplimo competing in the 5,000 meters. Uh -huh. Jacob Kiplimo. Jacob Kiplimo. Uh -huh. And he was competing with the, 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 the Norway brothers. Mm -hmm. Bri they are called Ingbristen. Mm -hmm. So those guys, uh, they are very good. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, they gave him a lot of... Uh, 
a lot of uh, challenges. Of course, we have Barega from Ethiopia who was also competing. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you watch the race for K Kiplima and uh, Barega, mm -hmm. Barega was far, very much far mm -hmm. ahead. Mm -hmm. But uh, this guy, I think he, he did a lot of, a lot of cal calculations mm -hmm. because he went and uh, reached where mm -hmm. he, he closed the gap. And uh, he went up to where the, 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 the Barega was yeah. and he even outpaced him mm -hmm. and he won the race. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a good it's a good race. It's mm -hmm. a continental tour and yeah. the people will always want to watch and mm -hmm. I'm happy that NTV mm -hmm. uh, will be airing this uh, race live because mm -hmm. many people are not able to watch maybe stream online yeah. but within the country I'm happy that everybody will be able to access the race mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. on, on NTV mm -hmm. which is a very good thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, we hope for a very good uh, day of course mm -hmm. and very good races mm -hmm. and uh, remember Remember, after that day also, we have London Marathon yeah, where coming people up. Will, yeah, coming mm -hmm. up the next day. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a well-packed uh, weekend and yeah. we are looking forward to good races. Mm -hmm. And maybe people will run uh, records. Mm -hmm. If not the meeting record, it uh -huh. will be <laughs> national records <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. or the world record. Yeah. Yes. And maybe this is, will be our way of pesetting for us, uh, the country and the supporters, uh, pesetting for London Marathon. Eh? Yeah, that's oh. true. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> and uh, perhaps something else uh, that we should look into is is um, uh, the participation on that particular day. It is a one-day event. That means it will be event after event after event. I want to believe it will be very colorful and e eventful when it comes to the sporting calendar. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, it's a well-packed day, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe starting from in the morning, maybe they have a walking race, and mm -hmm. then these other races comes along after maybe after the opening ceremony. Mm -hmm. It will be something good, mm -hmm. and uh, people will want to watch because. Mm -hmm. It's happening for the first time. Yeah. It is the first time. In mm -hmm. fact, it's the it's the only race that's happening in Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are mm -hmm. very lucky because we were able to host yeah. such an event because mm -hmm. uh, these other races are happening in Europe, maybe Asia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and something else that I would want us to look into, uh, perhaps, Richie, is the rewarding or uh, the motivation that will be behind uh, the Kipkeno Classic. Of course, every athlete looking forward for what it is. It is a beautiful uh, event and one whose inspiration comes comes from our legendary athlete in the country, uh, Kip Kano. Is this an opportunity where our athletes, granted they have had a very tough uh, time eh, when it comes to the sporting calendar, is this uh, an event where they could look forward to some appreciation going their way and they are uh, in uh, offering some upkeep for, for them, granted they have had a very difficult financial year? Yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. because uh, the corona thing has uh, kept uh, athletes for a long time uh, yeah. Yeah, out of competition. Mm -hmm. But uh, for this to happen, mm -hmm. maybe many athletes who will be participating will be going for just the best. Yeah. They want to win. Mm -hmm. They want to bag medals and mm -hmm. they want to win uh, to be at the podium. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the race being held right now in Nairobi, it's a motivation mm -hmm. going now towards the next season because mm -hmm. the next season is also coming and they need to prepare now well. We are now seeing uh, races now, mm -hmm. it's, it's opening up. Mm -hmm. and uh, competitions people will be who want to compete in various events yeah yeah okay thank you very much for uh for that uh interview and uh now i want to take you back to my colleague joshua makuri in nairobi but just before i hand over makuri this is to note that even as the country uh, becomes very very excited with this particular uh sporting calendar of course being featured live uh by ntv the kipkeno classic and even thereafter the london marathon i want to imagine that the excitement here uh in the north rift is like twice or 10 as much footage yes yes because sure. uh, most of these participants are born and bred here and will be celebrating all the way and of course uh, fans being very very excited that ntv will be bringing you that event live on uh, when time comes uh, we'll be having the kipkeno classic and of course uh, the london marathon kwa sasa yusha makori uwanja ni wako Sasa hapo hapo kwa uwanja, Lois na jaribu kuangalia mkiwa na roti chapo katika studio ya Eldoret. Sasa wanariadha wengi wanatokea katika mji wa Eldoret, maeneo ya bonde la ufa. Alafu ingekuwaje kumba hii Kip Keino Classic ingefanyika katika uwanja wa Kip Keino wenyewe ingekuwa stare zaidi. Lakini potele ya pote wanakarabati.
Or ingekuwa ni sherehe kubwa unajua hapa maeneo ya North Rift kila inapofika mwezi wa Agosti mpaka pale Disemba sherehe zinakuwa nyingi tu nyingi tu sasa hii ni sherehe ambayo tungeichanga mkia vilivyo lakini hata hivyo hata ingawa sherehe hiyo haijaletwa hapa ha, na ni changamoto kwa serikali kuhakikisha kwamba viwanja pia uh, hapa uh, katika maeneo ya bonde ya ufa iviweze kutengenezwa vifikie ile standard ambayo uh, michezo kama hiyo inaweza kuletwa hapa nyumbani hapa maana nyumba, hapa ni nyumbani zaidi kushinda pale Nairobi <laughs> uh, kwa na riadha wengi ambao wanatakuwa maeneo haya. Lakini uh, si hoja manake NTV itakuwa inaleta uh, moja kwa moja kutoka pale Nyayo Stadium na tutakuwa tukifuatilia kwa karibu maeneo haya ya bonde la Ufa lakini bila shaka uh, itakuwa ni changamoto kubwa kwa serikali kuhakikisha uh, viwanja vya hapa kuna Kipkenyo, kuna kiwanja cha uh, Kamareny katika county ya Marakwet, Rotich katika uh, county ya Nandi kuna kipkeno vile vile kiwanja ukifika pale ni kazi tu inaendelea kila siku kazi tu inaendelea lakini hapa bado hatujapata matokeo lakini bila shaka tunaomba kwamba wanariadha kutoka hapa watetia bidii ingawa hamna mahali pazuri sana kwa pa kuweza kufanyia mazoezi yao watetia bidii na kama kawaida kama kawaida wanaenda kufanya kazi nzuri katika kipkeno classic na vile vile katika London Marathon Apo hapo sasa Lois wamekwisha kutema madini yao moja kwa moja kutoka kule Eldoret. Kwa sasa tena meli hii na ipeleka moja kwa moja hadi jumba la riadha hapo upande wa nyayo tu Aida Waringa yuko standby. Aida uwanja ni wako. Kabisa Makori and it's a really good point you brought up. You know, you can imagine if this was held at the Kipkeno State, that would have been something else, you know. Uh, but I am joined by Barnabas Korir who is the director of this Keep Kano Classic, of the inaugural 2020 World Athletics Continental Tour. You know, just to give us a bit more of his thoughts on the preparedness, what the future holds, and so much more about this tour that will be on Saturday, October 3rd, and that will be broadcast live and free to you right here on NTV. Thanks a lot for your time, Barnabas. Thank you, Aida. This is a great day for us. Uh, we have been looking forward to launching this event, and uh, today has come. And uh, of course, as you have put it correctly, that it would have been really great to have it at Kipeno uh, in our national stadium. Uh, but of course, we cannot do it because of certain aspects. Therefore, this is the day that we are waiting for. And uh, so far, we are ready. The stadium has been going on, been prepared very well, and we are excited. The athletes also have been looking forward to this event. And of course, this is the last event of the season. We have the, the last of the Continental Tour, the last of the major international events in Kenya. So many athletes want to come to see this country. Despite the pandemic, there is so much excitement and we are really happy. As Kenyans, this is very important for us and for the future. If we succeed in having an, uh, a big event, definitely the future is looking great for us. And Barnabas, let's not forget there was the World Under-18 Championships back in uh, 2017 by IAAF here in Nairobi. How big was that in an inspiration for this Nairobi Continental Tour? Of course, if you look back uh, three years ago, we had the uh, Under-18 and uh, it was huge. Thousands of Kenyans turned up in the stadium. It has never happened that uh, so many people could turn up for us an event of uh, that magnitude. And that is, what, that is the reason why uh, World, Athletics, World Athletics gave us this uh, event to organize is because of that event that it was so successful. And of course, as we prepare for this one now, the Kenyans love athletics. This is an event, this is a sport that has put Kenya in the world map. And Kenyans will turn up in huge numbers. Although it will be restricted, definitely those who will be allowed to come will turn up in large numbers to make sure that uh, the world knows that this is the country where number one sport is athletics. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself. We are looking forward to having C.S. Amina here, who will be able to give us a bit more in terms of a directive on hopefully having some fans in the stadium. But back to the preparedness, because, you know, Nyayo National Stadium, Barnabas, has been in renovation for quite some time. How are we looking in terms of infrastructural preparedness for this event? It's two weeks away. Yes, we are, uh, the Ministry of Sports uh, and uh, Amina Mohammed and uh, the peers, they have done a great job. And in fact, uh, we are wishing that if they were there before, this thing would have been done a long time ago. It has been prepared. The only thing that was remaining is the synthetic truck, a small patch that is being done now. Everything is okay, everything is in place, and this stadium is going to be big. If you have seen the photos already, you see that it is magnificent. And I'm sure that the Kenyans will be proud of what the, the government has done to improve the infrastructure in this country. One of those best 
stadium is uh, Nyao Stadium and that is why we are really thankful of the government for ensuring that most of this uh, infrastructure is uh, built across the country to ensure that our young people have an opportunity to have places where they can train and Nyao Stadium is one of those and we are so happy that we will be the first one to use and uh, the Kenyans to enjoy and of course our athletes will be so happy to be here. They like this stadium so much. It is even sometimes the Tatan track they prefer here than sometimes Kasarani. This is where they belong. This is where they have been training. This is the place they are going to run on the 3rd of October and I hope that uh, the fireworks will be there. We hope so too. We look forward to that Barnabas. And as the director of this meet, this Nairobi Continental Tour, yes we are talking about infrastructure and preparedness but also there is the element of preparedness in terms of COVID-19. Give us a bit more insight into some of these measures that uh, your task force has come up with. Yes, uh, the, the government set up a task force for resumption of sports, which went very well. Uh, most of the federations were involved. I was part of the team that uh, came up with the rules and regulations governing that. We had also uh, guidelines from World Athletics, which are also integrated with these uh, proposals. And the, it was released. Uh, the, the, it was released. The, the information was released given to all the federations. And I can tell you that uh, we have also the committee that was set up by the president of Atlas Kenya to ensure that the rules that have been given, the guidelines that will be used during this event will be implemented uh, to the latter. And we have already put in place the structures that will allow those who are coming to this country from Europe that they will be taken care of as soon as they arrive, the hotels they will be tested and meet the, the, the requirements that has been given by the Minister of Health. And I'm sure that everything will be in place. We have the Minister of Health officials, we have also the, the technical officials that will be there. Also those who are coming will be allowed to stay in the hotel after being tested, maybe seven, eight hours, confirmed, then they can be checked in. But everybody who will be coming will have been uh, accredited through um, uh, confirmation that they have been tested and they, and they are negative. So this is going to be okay. We have put all the system in place. The only thing we are doing now is to make sure that we implement that according to the regulations that have been given by uh, the Minister of Health and also guidelines from World Athletics. All the best on that. And of course, uh, you know, this particular World Athletics Continental Tour, a huge part of, uh, I will say, its popularity so far is that it's featured a lot of events that were cut off from the top tier Diamond League. Top of that, of course, Barnabas is a 3,000 meter steeple chase. What are your thoughts on this? Yes, the reason why uh, the Continental Tour was uh, actually initiated was because most of the events that were we always call the belongs to Kenyans or East Africans, was actually removed from uh, the Diamond League. And that one is, one of them is the 3,000. So they started to have the co-events. We have three categories now. We have the co-events that involve the, uh, the civil jets for men and women. We have also the, um, uh, the discussional events that will also be 1,500, 5,000, and other events that is good for, for the country. And then we have the national events that will be now for upcoming athletes. So this is very important for us because now it captures the events that might not be run during the <coughs> um, I mean Diamond League, and it will be run according to the requirements or regulations given by a continental tour. So this is something that also, in the long term, it will also help us in ensuring that our athletes will not be left out from Diamond League, but they will also have a category of events that also will be equivalent uh, to Diamond League, and it will also ensure that athletics in Kenya and other countries in Africa will also grow in our region. So it is important. We like it also because it gives an opportunity for us now to develop sports in our country and also our region in Africa. Fantastic. So just give us a bit more in terms of logistics. For the viewers who are watching, for the Kenyans who are interested, what time does the event start? We know that it's on uh, 3rd October, which is on Saturday, two weeks from now roughly. Give us a bit more in terms of logistics. Yes, uh, the events will start on the 3rd and we are starting with the national events. Of course, uh, we have to give opportunity to walking race, which is starting at 8.30. And then now the other events will follow, the national events, 10,000 meters and any other 400 meters, which are not in the discussion events. The international broadcast will start uh, at 4 o'clock. That will involve now the goal events and some of the events from the discretionary. But the major events will be starting at 2 o'clock until 6 o'clock. But it will be broken into two, the discretionary and, um, and the core events, which is also we beamed internationally, of course, by the national TV. So we have everything in place. And in between also, we are going to have uh, entertainment. 
We want to have also kids' athletics. We want also to have entertainment. And most of the people we are negotiating with the government now, I'm sure that uh, the, the, the Minister for Sports will announce uh, what they have agreed to give us as, as, as concerns the... Um, uh, I mean, the, the people who want to watch, the spectators. We are going to have spectators, but she will announce how many will be allowed to enter the stadium and on what modalities we are going to, uh, to allow the, to enter the stadium. The others, of course, uh, the nation will be beaming to the public in their own homes. Absolutely. You've heard it from Barnabas Correa himself. This event, that being on uh, 3rd October Saturday, the World Athletics Continental Tour will be live right here on NTV on 3rd October. A quick one before we finish up, as we wrap up Barnabas. This event has been held in several cities um, in the course of the last few months. What lessons have we learned in terms of how we can improve it on this home front? Yes, we have had an opportunity, starting from Turku and then the last one in Zagreb. We followed how they were organizing. We are also in touch with the World Athletics, uh, Continental Tour officials, directors, to see how they are organizing and we learn the lessons from those ones. We have also events, uh, Continental Tour events, that they did not have spectators in the stadium. We have those events also that they had in the spectators in the stadium, how they were organizing the infield and also handling the athletes as they, as they move in. So we have, uh, we have a raft of um, uh, information that is going to assist us. You saw Tokyo. Uh, they didn't have any sports in the, I mean, spectators in the stadium. So this is something that we have learned. It was, we were the first one, if it was not for the pandemic. But then we are now going to be the last one. But I feel good because now we have learned some lessons that will guide us on how we can organize at this event. And then, of course, when you are the last one, everybody looks at you. It gives you also an opportunity to, for the world to see how you are organizing this event. And we want the Kenyans to understand that it is important for all of us, not only for Athletes Kenya, but for Kenya as a whole. If we are thinking of even organizing other events in the future, this is an opportunity now that we can showcase what we can do as a country. And uh, we are thinking about uh, maybe 2025 to, to bring on board maybe World Championship. How can we do that? We can only achieve uh, that status if we organize this event, which is an international event. If we have enough hotels, if we have the stadiums, and of course, the most important in any uh, competition are the spectators. If they turn up in thousands, of course, they will always overlook other things, but they say, okay, let us go to where people are. And Kenya is where the love of athletics is. Those are some very bold claims, the 2025 World Championships. But indeed, Barnabas, dreams are valid. Thanks a lot for your time. As you've heard there from Barnabas career, everything will be geared towards the Nyayo National Stadium that will be on October 3rd, Saturday. I keep saying this, I will say it again. Don't forget that the next day will be the London Marathon and both athletics events will be beamed live and for free, by the way, here on NTV Kenya. Well, as you've had Barnabe saying, it's all about the energy and we will look forward in the next bit, I do hope, to have CS Amina here with us. That, of course, being Cabinet Secretary in the Ministry of Sports to just give us more insight and hopefully more directives on exactly how this tournament or this event will look like. Will there be fans? If so, how many? Because you do know that uh, the World Under-18 Championships back in 2017, I mean, we saw Kasarani packed to the rafters. So, of course, I'm sure a situation like that might not happen due to, due to the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, but we will be sure to update you on exactly what the CS has to say in terms of the fans' situation. Back to you. Aida Waringa huya metema madini yake moja kwa moja kutoka jumba la riadha hapa jijini Nairobi. Ikiwa kwamba ni siku ambayo kama ndo umefungua TV yako kaona mm, nini kikikoewani kwa NTV na NTV ndo maskani. Sasa ni uzinduzi wenyewe wa shughuli nzito ya weekend ya tarehe tatu na nne lakini hapa ni tatu. Manake nne tulisha fanya. Ile ni ya London Marathon. Sasa hii ni ya mashindano ya riadha ya mabara round ya Nairobi ambayo itafanyika hapa nyumbani siku ya Jumamosi alafu siku ya Jumapili sasa ndo shughuli nzito moja kwa moja kutoka kule maeneo ya mji mkuu wa United Kingdom London sasa ni London Marathon ya takuwa tu ni makala ya 40 ambayo kiukweli ushindani utakuwepo kati ya Mshikilizi wa rekodi ya ulimwengu huyu ni Eliud Kipchoge Sambamba na Kenenisa Bekele wa Ethiopia 
katika upande wa kinadada yuko mshikilizaji wa rekodi ya ulimwengu ambaye ni Bridget Cosgay, Sambamba na Vivian Cheruyot, Pocket Rocket, alafu yuko bingwa wa dunia ambaye ni Ruth Chepungetich. Wapo wengine wanariadha kutoka mataifa tofauti ya dunia ambao watashiriki katika London Marathon ikiwa ni makala ya 40 utayapata moja kwa moja hapa NTV ikiwa ni siku ya Jumapili ya Oktoba tarehe 4 sasa Oktoba tarehe 3 turudi hapa mahali tulikuwa ndio sasa yatafanyika mashindano makubwa duniani tena bara Afrika eti kwamba Kenya ndio sisi tunaandaa sasa raundi ya bara Afrika ni heshima kubwa na ni kwa sababu ya shughuli nzito ambayo kiukweli wanariadha wa hapa nyumbani wanafanya mambo makubwa wanainua jina la Kenya wanafanya Kenya inajulikana kote duniani kwa sababu ya riadha na mwanariadha huwa ni mtu ambaye anajitegemea sana na ngangana mazoezini anakwenda kule kuipeparusha bendera ya taifa sio kama kandada mnakwenda kama timu moja wachezaji moja na wale wa kuingia kusaidia wakati mmoja mehema kidogo lakini kiukweli tu kuibia siri ni kwamba mwaka 2017 tukaandaa yale under 18 Safari hii tulikuwa tuandaa yale under 20 mwaka huu lakini kwa sababu ya janga la homa ya corona mm, yakasukumwa mbele mashindano ya safari rally pia ilikuwa fanyike hapa nyumbani Julai lakini potele ya pote yamesukumwa mbele lakini safari hii wakati ambapo waziri wa michezo Amina Muhammad atakuwa nyayo kusema moja kwa moja na Aida Waringa amekwisha kutoa mwelekeo kwamba michezo inarejelewa kuanzia tuseme mwezi ujao kwa sababu sasa kwa kiasi fulani tunadhibiti janga la homa ya corona sitaki niteme sana kwa heshima kubwa niende tena moja kwa moja hadi mji wa mabingwa kule Eldoret Lois safari hii mko na Elias Makori na Rotich labda na Mandago mwenyewe nasikia mheshimiwa yupo area ni hitilafu ya mitambo hapo wajua kama sauti haipo unamwona mtu midomo tu inacheza lakini husikia anasema nini ni hitilafu ya mitambo lakini kirekebisho tutakwenda kwa moja kwa moja kwa sababu watakuwa wanasema na gavana wa Wasin Gesho mji mkuu wa Eldoret kule ndo nyumbani mama bingwa alafu chimbuko ni maeneo ya Iteni kule Elgeyo Marakwet lakini kiukweli tu hapa ni uzinduzi maridadi tena maridhawa wa makala ya hapa nyumbani wacha niyete makala ya hapa nyumbani kwa sababu Kenya imepewa heshima kubwa ya kuandaa raundi ya Nairobi ya Cape Kaino Classic ilipewa jina la mheshimiwa wa riadha hapa nyumbani Kipchoge Kaino ambaye alifanya mambo yake makuu katika mashindano olimpiki mashindano ya dunia na hapa nyumbani tu alitesa wakati wake leo hii amestaafu riadha amewahi kuwa kiongozi katika kamati olimpiki hapa nyumbani NOC lakini akaja akaondoka ka akampisha Paul Tergat kwa heshima kubwa tena kwa mara nyingine ni peleke meli hadi kule maeneo ya Loret County ya Wasinigishu Lois safari hii ni na imani kwamba sauti ipo <laughs> Asante sana mwenzangu Yesha Makore mtazamaji Kondrathi kwa hiti lafu hiyo ya kimitambo pamoja nami katika studio kwanza niwajulisho wageni wangu ni mhariri mkuu masuala ya sporti Elias Makori na tunaye gavana wa county ya Wasengisho Jackson Mandago karibuni sana uh, gentlemen governor Mandago we start with you on October the 3rd uh, the country will be hosting the Cape Kano uh, Classic and a day after that is on October the 4th uh, we will be having the London Marathon what sort of excitement is here in the in the North Rift granted that most of these uh, sportsmen and women who are our world champs come from the region. Um, thank you very much, Mangoi. I think uh, first and foremost as a county and uh, a residents of a region that <laughs> is sports rich, we are so excited about the Kipkeno Classics. One, for the recognition of uh, Kipkeno, mm -hmm. being given the honors to call the meet Kipkeno in itself yeah is a big plus for us as a sports region mm -hmm. and we really feel uh, honored to have been uh, given that title. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, Kipkeno Classics has been given the gold status mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the tours outside um, the World Tours mm -hmm. Athletics. Mm -hmm. And for us, we are really proud of that because uh, Kenya is being recognized as one of the powerhouses in terms of sports. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and locally, of course, as not Rift region, and uh, you are sure that if I was here with my colleague, Governor Tolgos, and uh, colleague, Governor Sang, mm -hmm. there would have been a little bit of a battle on, uh, you know, who is the owner of Kipchoge Keino, uh -huh. who is the owner of Elwood Kipchoge. Uh -huh. But for us in Wasingishi, we are fortunate because um, mm -hmm. We are the universal recipient mm -hmm. of all sportsmen and women in the country. So mm -hmm. they can be from the home or from the source. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Finally, they will land here in the city. Mm -hmm. And so for us, we are really excited mm -hmm. that uh, Keep Kino Classic is coming just a day before the London Marathon. And you know that London Marathon will be mm -hmm. a serious meet mm -hmm. because um, the competition between Eliud uh, Kipchoge mm -hmm. and uh, Bekele, mm -hmm. uh, I think, will be one of its kind mm -hmm. in this world. I, I don't think anybody in this region will remove the eyes off the screen mm -hmm. on that particular day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, as a region, we are really excited mm -hmm. and we are happy that we've been honored with that Kipkeno Classic. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are looking forward to an opportunity, of course, uh, partnering with NTV mm -hmm. and um, uh, Cabinet Secretary, uh, Tourism, uh, State Department of Tourism, mm -hmm. uh, Wasiri Balala and others, mm -hmm. uh, to bring a viewership uh, here in Eldred. Events. Uh, mm -hmm. Ah, interesting. As the rest of the country will be viewing live from Nairobi, you should also have ours here. That's yes. a guarantee, Governor. Asante uh, Sana. And so, uh, I know our ME Sports Makori, your favorite race of that particular day. I understand it will. It is a one-day event full of track and field events. W uh, what is your uh, favorite sports uh, of that day? Well, actually, all of them. Mm -hmm. All of them, because uh, mm -hmm. the significance of this meeting is uh, number one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Diamond League, which is right at the top. Mm -hmm was sort of discriminating against the distance races, the mm -hmm. 5,000 meters, the steeplechase, and even um, the triple jump and the discus. Mm -hmm. So all these events have been brought to the Continental Tour. And it's an opportunity for Kenya to see the top athletes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people like El Bakali, who is yeah. now trying to threaten our steeplechase dominance. Mm -hmm. So all events will be good. Mm -hmm. And remember, you know, from the morning, there'll be other smaller events, national events, before the two-hour window for TV from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., mm -hmm. where Kenya will showcase throughout yeah. the world, uh, you know, what we have to show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. And, and Governor Mandago, we want to imagine the contribution of the region will be immense when it comes to Kipkeno Classic and also our London Marathon. What sort of work, could you paint for us a picture, what sort of work goes on behind the scenes here in the regions before now these champs set to Nairobi and other world tours uh, in competitions? Um, Wangoi, mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, when we watch our athletes competing, sometimes um, fans and uh, citizens don't understand what goes on behind, to mm -hmm. put that together. But I'll tell you that uh, the athletes will be in very high gear in terms of preparation. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see them uh, sticking to their schedules. This is the time they are very strict in terms of the events, the activities they undertake. Um, and adhering to their training plan. Yeah. Uh, so behind the scenes, we have a couple of trainers here, we have coaches, we have tacticians doing their bit mm -hmm. to make sure that our athletes will be at the best form yeah. um, to compete. Mm -hmm. I think uh, what we need to do now as government, and I think this is what we have not been doing, mm -hmm. is actually to provide uh, adequate modern, ultra-modern sporting facilities mm -hmm. to enhance that yeah. kind of training. Mm -hmm. And I think we are headed there. Mm -hmm. Uh, national government is in the process of completing a Kipchoge Keno Stadium. We in county government have already set aside funds. Uh, we are just on the tendering uh, stage to uh, rebuild the 64 stadium. And I think when those are complete, mm -hmm. I think they will have a perfect opportunity for training. And we mm -hmm. shall even see better for performance. Yeah. We hope that these are going to be complete in time, mm -hmm. just to make sure that our steeplechase uh, record is not threatened further mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> by these upcoming at least from yeah. other countries. Yeah. Uh -huh. And in the meantime, Akuri, some of the races that are currently being threatened is the 10,000 meters for men and 5,000 meters also for men. Where are we going wrong? Where is the disconnect? Governor here is admitting uh, a bit of problems when it comes to infrastructure. Uh, but how do we go about these races that have been threatened and others are underway uh, in terms of competition uh, from our neighbors? Actually, we'd like to thank uh, His Excellency the Governor for mm -hmm. you know fighting for Keep Kano Stadium. Mm -hmm. Because the biggest threat is uh, the athletes, when they're very young, they're going mm -hmm. for road races. You mm -hmm. find 18-year-olds not even doing 5,000 5, meters or 10,000. Yeah. They want to go there bef because there's the money. Mm -hmm. So if you have good facilities, good tracks, they can train well, then we can challenge for those two races. Actually, all the way from 800 meters. If you look at 800 meters, mm -hmm. 
both for men and women, it's a big threat. Yeah. We are not dominating. Since Rudisha, mm -hmm. you know, sort of had his injury, mm -hmm. and since people like Unisum, you know, uh, Janet Chepkosge, mm -hmm. people like Pamela Jelimo, once right. they left, 800 meters, we don't have any women, mm -hmm. even running on the Diamond League mm -hmm. uh, circuit. So we need to build our tracks. We need more local races mm -hmm. uh, from 800 meters all the way to 10,000 meters. Yeah. Actually, if you look at uh, 5,000 meters, for example, mm -hmm. I think uh, since uh, Eliud, very few people have run under 13 minutes in yeah. Kenya, which mm -hmm. is a big, big uh, mm -hmm. uh, negative on our part. Yeah. And Makuri, earlier we were having a conversation with Rotich, uh, the sports writer from Daily Nation, and he had a concern uh, when it comes to smooth transition of these races. Uh, are we creating a huge gap between the current champions that we have right now and the junior and upcoming uh, athletes? How do we ensure there's a smooth transition so as not to create space for vacuum and for allowing competition from outside uh, to take advantage of us actually what athletic kenya, kenya have done uh, mm -hmm. you know coming up with the with the camps and also the county government of wasingishu is working on a camp this is important because these uh, young people need to go into camp and then they develop slowly mm -hmm. ideally we have the world under 20 championships in nairobi next mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. ideally the athletes we should be seeing are the ones who ran in 2017 in the world under 18 so there's a natural progression mm -hmm. from under 18 under 20 right. all the way to the senior level mm -hmm. It's very sad, like I say, to see people 18 year olds running, you yeah. know, the marathon, half marathon on the road, mm -hmm. just because there's money. Yeah. And especially now, it's going to be even worse because, mm -hmm. you know, we've lost a whole year. People want to come back in a, in a hurry. What I mean is a pesa rakaraka, a road race here in mm -hmm. Malaysia, a road race in India. Mm -hmm. So they'll be going all over. Mm -hmm. They need to be controlled yeah. and developed in a... Mm -hmm. In a specific way. Yeah, yeah. And Governor Mandago, when it comes to our junior athletes, most of them are still within our households or their parents' uh, households and in school. Uh, is the county government having a plan on how to support junior and upcoming athletes who, uh, um, uh, who majorly ex experience a lot of problems when it comes to identifying and growing their talent? Uh, yes, Wangoi. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, in the past, we have had a serious discussion with Athletics Kenya. Yeah and my department of sports mm -hmm. with a view of uh, establishing um, camps particularly during school holidays mm -hmm. and identifying schools that can become center of excellence in terms of uh, technical support mm -hmm. for, for sports yeah. so that we can partner with them, mm -hmm. take those teachers who are responsible for sports mm -hmm. probably to some enhance a little bit of enhanced training for coaching, for tactician and so forth so that while the, the, the pupils and the students are still in school, mm -hmm. they are still able to train and yeah. study. Yeah. Because the, the, the problem that we have had and uh, why you find parents, and you see this, that's what, that, that's what brings in the transitional issues mm -hmm. and in sports, mm -hmm. the interference of parents. Yeah. You know, most parents have not appreciated mm -hmm. that sport as a talent mm -hmm. can actually be, be, be used mm -hmm. for, for livelihood and mm -hmm. also it's part of a career. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it can mm -hmm. be chosen as a career. Mm -hmm. But because so many parents really don't put emphasis, they, you, you find that they'll tell the channel, no, you cannot go and run, no, you are supposed to be studying and mm -hmm. so forth. So we are trying to look for, for a fused approach yes. where these people can still be practicing, but they can also still be you know, studying. And uh, we are working with AK mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, in the near future, not so long, if it were not for this corona, we are already in the formative stages. Yeah of establishing at least in every sub-county mm -hmm. two schools yeah. uh, where we can have residential camps for school going mm -hmm. for you know for those in secondary school and yeah. also those in primary schools yeah. and then they can be nurtured mm -hmm. again uh, as county government with our establishment of our camps mm -hmm. we we want to make sure that we are consistently training mm -hmm. but uh, to make sure that we are able to transit properly and not in a hurry yeah uh, Ministry of Sports should do a policy mm -hmm. and you know there should be some guidelines. Yeah. Because if you find an 18 year old running a mm -hmm. marathon, then don't, don't, don't expect that person to last for so long in, uh, in the competition stage. Mm -hmm. You know, it will be, it, it will be short. Mm -hmm. Because marathons are normally supposed to be run by people who have at least been on the track for a little while yeah. uh, yeah. and have come of age. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you find young people rushing because of, um, of course, trying to make an income, yeah. Uh, then that is what makes them 
happy. They are very brief. Mm. You, you, and we even tend to forget them very fast. Mm. Because they come to the limelight one or two years, and then, and then mm. they, are, they, they are all gone. Yeah. But we would like to see a situation mm -hmm. where we are seeing an athlete for the next 10 years. Yes. You know, growing 1,500, like mm -hmm. that, 3,000, 5,000, and then yes. now proceeding to marathon and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and all that. And then as others also, uh, upcoming uh, uh, great plan. Uh, Makori, this uh, world tour of the Kipkeno <laughs> Classic, the seventh edition will be held here in the country. Is it an indicator that we're not doing very badly when it comes to uh, matter sports? And what informed that particular decision? Granted, it is the only one happening uh, in Africa. Actually, it was not an easy mm -hmm. thing to get. Um, and I must thank the national government, the uh, mm -hmm. cabinet secretary, Amina, mm -hmm. um, and also Athletics Kenya, because I was in Monaco with them last year in November, mm -hmm. when we were actually fighting with World Athletics to have this thing in Nairobi, because they started the continental tour without a an African leg, then we said, uh, why should we call it continental tour and mm -hmm. it doesn't come to Africa? And of course, when you look at Africa, the other yeah. people are interested, South mm -hmm. Africa, Morocco, but then Kenya. Yeah. I mean, was in Gishu County alone mm -hmm. can produce more champions than uh, the rest of Africa. <laughs> so that it was yes. a natural choice for World Athletics to, to bring it here, mm -hmm. initially on a three-year contract. Then after that, uh, we can even aim to host the World Championships in yeah. 2025. Yeah. That's actually the mm -hmm. ultimate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and indeed, Governor, uh, earlier my colleague from Nairobi, Shamakori, was asking me, uh, would it have been more beautiful if this particular event was captured and uh, held here in the county of Wasingishu? Uh, you, of course, with under uh, Norib counties, are you, are you looking into a situation where in future, uh, immediately uh, Kenya bags such a, an opportunity, then you will be well placed to even host, granted majority of these uh, stars come from the region? Yeah, um, yes, Wangoi. Mm -hmm. Indeed, it would have been a pleasure. Yeah. But you know, we must uh, accept uh, that we are not prepared in terms of facilities, mm -hmm. and it was natural that it be hosted in Nairobi because of the facilities. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, in 2025, when we as a nation, if we shall be fortunate to back the World Championship, will be hosted here. Mm -hmm. We believe, but by that time, Cameroon Stadium will be re will be ready. Kipchoge yeah. Keno Inlet will be ready. Mm -hmm. The one in Kapsabet will be ready, and also our 64 Stadium will be ready. Mm -hmm. And I think by that time, we shall have capacity to host um, yeah. mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. uh, and that will give us an opportunity because we, I think we have a very big fan fan base here for yeah. for, for athletics, and mm -hmm. they would have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Some of these uh, athletics fans would, would want to see Kinabekele life. You know, there is this thing in this country that yeah. unless you meet the person one by one. <laughs> Yeah, that thing on TV is not Believability sufficient. Believability is not yeah, sufficient, yes. Manga, macho kwa macho. Macho kwa macho. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. And maybe, Governor, uh, as we wind up this particular conversation, people are asking me, ask the Governor to tell us what is the secret, what is the ingredient? Wanariyada wa kimbia jivetu hapa nyumbani, wanakula nini, wanafanya nini to be able to become a world champs? Mwangoi, mm -hmm. you know in this country, there, there's a law for patent rights. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, and because of that law, uh, we are not going to discuss to disclose. It is under lock and seal. We are targeting to beat yeah. uh, our competitors, uh -huh. so we must keep it now under lock and key for the time being. Mm -hmm. And maybe, uh, Governor, uh, a word to the athletes that will be performing in these two events: Kipkeno Classic on October third, London Marathon October fourth, which all will be uh, held live by NTV. Uh, mm -hmm. As uh, one of the athletics fan mm -hmm. uh, and, and the fans from this region, mm -hmm. first we want to wish them well and we want to ask them to adequately prepare. Mm -hmm. We are looking up to them. For Kipkeno Classic, mm -hmm. this is an opportunity for us as a nation mm -hmm. to showcase our talent, our capacity mm -hmm. to host this event mm -hmm. and that will add into our muscle to bid for the 2025 mm -hmm. uh, World Championship to be hosted here in the country. Yeah. Uh, I want to add at least to stick to all the rules and regulations of the game mm -hmm. so that uh, it, give a, it gives us a better platform mm -hmm. uh, to bid internationally. Yeah. This being an event that we are fortunate as a nation mm -hmm. to host yeah. and to be the only place identified in the continent, in the African continent, mm -hmm. uh, it, is, it is more than a privilege yeah. and we must really optimize mm -hmm. its use and bring out the best mm -hmm. uh, so that in the future we make it easy for our cabinet secretary, the yeah. State Department of uh, Sports, mm -hmm. you know, to bid for, for other events. Yes. And, and lastly, uh, my ME Sports, Mr. Makori, it is 
a month that Kenyans will be looking to start into because NTV will be hosting these two events live. Uh, please talk to us on the importance of the media just working closely uh, with uh, the government, like uh, the county government of Wasingishu, and even the national government, in bringing uh, such events and the support uh, that as NTV you're looking uh, to give into these two events. Well, actually, first of all, I'd mm. like to thank His Excellency the Governor for mm. agreeing to come to our a great studio of Eldoret. Yes, uh, he's thank a you. very heavy schedule. Mm -hmm. And also to encourage him to keep training because mm -hmm. he's a very good athlete in mm -hmm. his own right. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> no, we have to work together. Yeah. Um, NTV, you see now with the coronavirus situation, like in London, there'll be no fans allowed there. Mm -hmm. So the focus will be on television. Mm -hmm. Everybody will be watching television. And that's why NTV, mm -hmm. uh, we decided to say, look here, yeah. we'll show the Keep Keno Classic on third. And the following day, we show the London Marathon so that people can enjoy from the comfort of their homes yes. and cheer virtually. Mm -hmm. And of course, these two live events uh, will be happening with uh, the corona protocols uh, set by the government. But nonetheless, of course, we want to assure you uh, that these two particular events, NTV, will be standing by October the 3rd for the Cape Kano Classic. And thereafter, about 24 hours later, October the 4th for London Marathon. So keep it NTV. We continue with uh, the countdown. Every day we strike a day off and we uh, just look forward to these particular events. For now, I want you to take back to back to our usual programming NTV takes a short break and we'll see you much later thank you We are Nation, Africa's independent media brand. We are committed to empowering all Africans, from the young to the old, from the curious to the educated, and from the heart of the cities to the rural areas, we are Nation. Join us, because if you want to get far, you do it together. Nation. Empower Africa. Anachikile shop kupo livia mpesa. Endo shop ata tuchapele usiku. Okay. by Nation Media Group brings you Celebrity Home Chef. This is a chance to nominate your favorite celebrity to get in the kitchen and showcase their cooking skills on TV. 
simply head on to at Pishu254 on social media. Comment by tagging your favorite celebrity and guess what? We might just make it happen. Tune in to NTV every Friday to catch the celebrity in action. Business Daily has got you covered. Get evolving market trends, ingenious business ideas, and the latest tech content in the new market dynamic and exciting lifestyle content in the new normal environment. Business Daily. More possibilities. This is NTV. Kronomita ya hapa studio na niambia ni saa nne dakika tisa inaingia dakika kumi nikiangalia pembeni kronomita iko juu yangu hapa ndo na kwenda kando kidogo kwa heshima kubwa kama ndo mwanzo tu yani umeingia katika mitambo kaona kwamba NTV lo hii nini kinaendelea kwa sasa ni shughuli nzito ya uzinduzi wa round ya Kipkeino Classic ya riadha ya mabara ambayo inafanyika katika bara Afrika mji mkuu wa Nairobi taifa ni Kenya uwanja wa taifa wa Nyayo Wacha nipeleke imeli hadi kwa Aida Waringa nafikiri yuko tisti tena ngangari kabisa kusema na mkuu wa idara ya utangazaji hapa NTV Aida kama una niwai na kuona uko wima na maski <laughs> na, <laughs> na kuwai kabisa makori and yes indeed I am here with Monica Njungu who is the head of broad at NTV I will start things off with, you know, saying that it has been a rough year because of COVID-19. But Monica, we're seeing sports slowly resuming. How are you feeling about everything? I'm overly excited, even just as an individual. You see, a lot of times we are happy because we can watch the Premier League or watch a big league on television. But to imagine that this is now about our local athletes, about an event in this country, it just gives me goosebumps, literally, to imagine that we shall be somewhere shouting and celebrating a Kenyan cross. The finish line for me is so, so exciting. And that's really what it's about because, you know, a lot of times people want to watch the international events, but now we're bringing the international events live for free to people's homes. Exactly. You see, there's, there's this thing about being sat at home and watching LeBron or Aboumeyang score a goal and you're... There's a lot of adrenaline to it, but just imagine this is happening in this country. You can be amongst a few people who will be the spectators, of course, because of the current situation we find ourselves. But then these are people you probably know. You're somewhere in Eldoret and this is your neighbor. You're somewhere in Nairobi and this is someone you have bumped into. So imagine what that makes you feel. So away from it just being an international event, because that's the other great thing about the World Continental Tour, the Kipkeino Classic in Nairobi. It's the only event of its nature in, Nai in Nairobi and in Africa. Imagine what that just means to us. And in a year where we have all really suffered from various challenges, to imagine that this event, which was supposed to be the first one, remember, in May, is then now the last event that can then help us to showcase first what we are made of as a country from a point of what people can enjoy. The other is the athletes. I mean, those ones always make us proud. But the other one is as for Nation Media Group, what local capacity can do when it's developed to facilitate the production of an international event. Nothing makes me happier. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself. And as you're putting it, it's all about embracing sports and developing it, no? Yes, it's about embracing sports. Like thoroughly, you know, a lot of times sports get lip service, where it's all about, oh, there's a Kenyan who won, oh, we watched this guy, oh, we... no. But it's about a group like Nation Media Group then deciding, you know what, like for this event, 
we literally had to give a guarantee that we were going to be host broadcaster to facilitate Athletics Kenya to get the event to come to Kenya. So it's not just giving this event lip service and telling our athletes, no, we support you. It's going to the front line, committing resources, committing things that we have that then facilitate us not only to support the athletes, but to also show Kenyans that then these events can be done in our country, but they can also um, continue shouting at their greatest athletes and supporting them. And I'm so excited to see what new talent will come out. You see, that's the other ex exciting thing about sports. Sometimes you assume the old people will keep doing it and then you wake up one morning and there's a random name that you never thought about so we are really looking forward to this um, I'm loving that and you know you've brought in a very interesting perspective logistics that not too many Kenyans might be aware of when we see a lot of these events happening they need a host broadcaster even before the event can be announced in that country. Yes, exactly. So, for example, when the Athletics Kenya decided they would want to host this event in Kenya, they needed someone to give them a letter of guarantee that they would be willing to be the host broadcaster. Because a host broadcaster comes with a lot of responsibilities and things that you must do. But you can imagine the muscle of the nation media group. Not only NTV, but there's nation newspapers. There's so many other products that sit across newspaper, print, sit across radio, television, digital. And so for us to commit our resources to then go and tell Athletics Kenya, no, we will support you. We will give you a guarantee. We don't know what the event looks like. Remember, it, was, it had never even been hosted anywhere in the world at that point, And we were just, um, Athletics Kenya was bidding for just Africa. But we will support you. And look where we are. In a year where nobody thought too much of everything. And then now you find May cancelled, but here we are, October 3rd, a fantastic weekend for all of us, both at the Nation Media Group and for Kenyans, where you can then enjoy the World Continental Tour, the Kipkano Classic on Saturday. And then on Sunday, you can enjoy the London Marathon exclusively on NTV and other platforms that are NMG based. So for me, it just gives me so much encouragement to know. We've stopped paying lip service. This is serious. It's about supporting athletes, supporting Kenyans to watch what they can. And we are excited to be part of this. Sports is indeed, as you've heard Monica Ndungu there, the head of broadcast at NTV saying, sports is a serious business. You've said it even before I could ask it. I'll still repeat it, Monica. October 3rd, World Continental Tour. October 4th, London Marathon. Can we just say, let's go Kenya? Let's go Kenya. And we're so excited. And I can't imagine October 5th and just looking back and saying, what a year it's been, but what a weekend it will be. And for me, that's the rallying call. Let's go Kenya. Absolutely. Couldn't have put it better myself. Monica Ndongo, they are the head of broadcast at NTV. And as you've heard, it is the largest athletics event in 2020 in Africa. The World Athletics Continental Tour, the Kip Kano Classic, will be coming to you live and for free on NTV. And then on Sunday, October 4th, will be the London Marathon, live and for free once again on NTV Kenya, NTV Uganda. We have it on radio and we have it on all digital platforms. Makori, need I say more? Back to you. <laughs> Iko vizuri kuntu ya mbepiko na kupakuliwa moja kwa moja na Aida Waringa akiwa katika makao maku ya shirikisho la riyadha hapa nyumbani. E, K jumba la riyadha liko pembeni na wanja wataifa wanyayo, wanja mbao utanda raundi hiyo ya kipuka ino klasik ambaye nasubirio kwa hamu na gamu hamu na hamomo mashabiki walitamani sana wajae jae lakini itakuwaje corona ikasema mm, haiwezi lakini watapimwa pimwa na kulingana na takwimu ni kwamba Barnaba Korir alwai ni bia siri kwamba wanajaribu kuona kama hata kama ni mashabiki 1015 manake uwanja wa taifa wa nyayo pamoja na urembeshwaji ambao umekwisha kufanyika una uwezo mkubwa kukaliwa na mashabiki 1030 tuseme kwa mfano lakini nusu yake basi kuliko bure Heri nusu, sasa mimi nilifungua iki kitu kama mpokezaji. Wajua katika mbio zile za kupokezana kijiti, akianza vizuri. Mfano wa Yosho Makori, 
Shughuli inakuwa ikotisti kabisa. Sasa tena naipokeza hadi mji mkuu wa Eldoret kule maeneo ya studio ambayo kiukweli ni studio imejengwa vizuri ikawa wima ikawa tisti. Studio ambayo ina uwezo wa kufanya shughuli kama hii ya hapa Nation Media Group hapa Kimathi Street hmm? Nation Center. Wacha niende moja kwa moja hadi Eldoret. Many thanks, uh, my colleague Geshe Makori. We come back from uh, the county of Wasengishu, the home of champions. And uh, as the guests we had here earlier, uh, Area Governor Jackson Mandago and Managing Editor Sports NMG Elias Makori noted uh, that this particular uh, part of the country contributes a lot to Matters Athletics. And we will be following keenly uh, on October the 3rd and October the 4th when NTV will be broadcasting to you live these two events. This one that we're uh, hosting launching on this particular day the Kipkeno Classic and thereafter the London Marathon. Now with me in studio is uh, Wilfred Bongay. Karibu sana bona Bongay. Eh? Uh, Wilson, Wilfred Bongay is the 800 gold uh, medalist uh, during the Olympics uh, in the year 2008. Great. I'm right. Eh? Yes, sure. Karibu sana. Thank now you. Wilfred Bongay, I want to talk to you about this particular uh, Kipkeno uh, Classic mm. mar uh, events, uh, track and field events that we'll be having or uh, hosting in the country on October the 3rd and which NTV will be broadcasting live. Uh, as a, a, a former athlete or as a retired athlete, uh, are you proud or how does this sit with you or resonate with you as the country will be hosting uh, Kipkeno Classic? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Wankoi. I want mm -hmm. to say this, that you know it's long overdue. Mm -hmm. I think I'm one of the few Kenyan athletes that yeah. have always looked at the athletics, not only in Europe, but always and hoping that you know, it will one day come to, to Kenya. Yes. And therefore, mm -hmm. you know, hosting this event mm -hmm. uh, means a lot to us as athletes. Mm -hmm. I hope many Kenyans will be there to support uh, our Kenyan athletes, mm -hmm. though I know that we are going to have mm -hmm. also international uh, athletes coming in. Yes. I think what is very important for me, and especially hosting this event mm -hmm. as, as Kenya, is that always we see our Kenyan athletes running out of the country. We hardly find them running in our own country and yet you know right. we have the potential to be able mm -hmm. uh, to host it yes again mm -hmm. and the bigger part of it especially on my point of view mm -hmm. is that the market out there is shrinking mm -hmm. if you look at athletics at the moment mm -hmm. you know it, it's really really shrinking and mm -hmm. therefore i believe some few african countries mm -hmm. can be able to host such kind of events mm -hmm. We being the powerhouse, yeah. why can't we be able to host? Even at certain point, I yeah. would wish mm -hmm. to see that we will be able to do the Diamond Leagues, you know, the big events. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we know that uh, under 20 is coming. Mm -hmm. uh, so that makes us a preparation, you know, for us to be able to host bigger events in the right, future. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to you as an athlete, you've had these events where you're doing your race and people are cheering you on, uh, perhaps here in the country, but largely outside, because that is where uh, these great podiums happen. Talk to us about the home advantage of our champions here running uh, here in the country and just, just cheering them and then being at uh, their most comfortable place, so, it, so to say, uh, the Kenyan swell? Well, I, I, I believe, you know, come third, uh, it's going to be fireworks, mm -hmm. especially for the Kenyan athletes. Mm -hmm. We have the home advantage. Mm -hmm. Number two, and something that maybe most people doesn't uh, understand, mm -hmm. is that we have uh, the altitude, which is going to affect most uh, foreign athletes and especially those who come from low altitude like mm -hmm. Europe and other countries, right. definitely they are going to be very much affected. And mm -hmm. therefore, it gives us an advantage that for us we'll be able to perform uh, far much better. Mm -hmm. And as you rightly said that, uh, you know, what does it mean, uh, especially for us, the home advantage and, mm -hmm. uh, and feeling to run at home? Mm -hmm. You know, there is always a tendency that, and some of us, you know, most people never saw me, for example, maybe mm -hmm. running in Kenya, yeah. except during the trials. Mm -hmm. But other events, you know, no one was able to have that opportunity. So many Kenyans mm -hmm. will have an opportunity to be able to see their own top athletes. I mean, yes. how many mm -hmm. of us would like to watch uh, Eliud Kipchoge running live, mm -hmm. you know? We yes. only have to wait on TV to be able mm -hmm. to, to yeah. watch. So for this, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's going to be a very mm -hmm. uh, a big advantage for us. Yeah. It's going to, we are going to showcase also that, you know, Kenya, we are a powerhouse. We can be able to perform mm -hmm. uh, at home. Yeah. yeah. And uh, just to take you back to an event that we had recently was the Ineos Challenge, when we were the Ineos two-minute challenge uh, for Eliud Kipchoga. It literally brought the country to a standstill. Are we looking to um, a very a very historic day on October the 3rd when we'll be hosting the Kipkeno Classic because literally all these events will be from morning to evening. 
it will be rich, uh, rich talent, uh, or many hours of just Kenyans experiencing and consuming uh, this particular event. Well, um, in terms of maybe having records, mm -hmm. I, I know it's an uphill, mm -hmm. especially knowing that you know we are in altitude. Because again, you know we have realized that yeah. most events, you know, mm -hmm. is difficult to be able to to run. Mm -hmm. But again, you you can never know. You know, I mean, uh, we always have surprises, mm -hmm. uh, and I know that come third, definitely we are going to have. Uh, you know, fireworks, and as I said earlier, mm -hmm. yeah. um, I know that most of the, <clears throat> let's say, the international athletes, yeah. you know, most of them actually they have always wished to be able to run anywhere in Africa, mm -hmm. any race in Africa. And yes. I know uh, there are some athletes that are looking forward to this event yeah. and they want to come to be able to prove mm -hmm. maybe to us again that they can beat us, but I doubt, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll be looking forward to that. Yeah. And definitely between now, today and October the 3rd, a lot of works will be going into place, a lot of preparation. I was speaking to uh, Area Governor Jackson Mandago and he admitted uh, that there's a bit of uh, laxity when it comes to the, both the national and the county governments with offering support in preparation to our athletes. From a personal experience what sort of preparation goes into place what sort of um, work goes into place before an athlete is ready to take on these track and field events and uh, is the government supporting them in terms of infrastructure well uh, mm -hmm. thank you so much for bringing such uh, a question because mm -hmm. again for many years yeah. uh, we, we, we always read stories about Kenyan athletes, mm -hmm. you know, the situations, the challenges that they go. Yeah. And we ask ourselves that these are the people that market this country. I mean, there are only three things that you can know about Kenya. That is the wildlife, the Kenyan athletes, and mm -hmm. our beaches, mm -hmm. you know, uh, our coastline. Mm -hmm. So you look at it and you are like, when can we be able to recognize that this is an industry? Mm -hmm. We know very well that, you know, uh, the sports industry around the world you right. know, is running in billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as a country, we should have been proud of the, our, our athletes, mm -hmm. find a way that we can be able to support them yeah. when they are running mm -hmm. and after, or mm -hmm. even those ones who are upcoming. Mm -hmm. Because we know very well that, you know, we have got so many upcoming athletes right. that they do run and they don't have any uh, any shoes, mm -hmm. they don't have any training area, yeah. there's always a lot of challenges, mm -hmm. and therefore it, it makes me and it breaks my heart always whenever you read a story, you know, mm -hmm. that is not uh, 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 nice. Yeah. And yet we are not so poor that mm -hmm. we cannot be able to support our athletes. Well, forward, and yeah. especially, mm -hmm. you know, we should find a way that we can be able to support those who retired. Mm -hmm. We have got, well, let me tell you that, mm -hmm. we have those athletes who ran in the 60s, in the, in the 70s, 70s and 80s. 80s. They were not making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as a country, I believe that we can be able to support them in a way mm -hmm. but unfortunately we ne ne neglect them yeah. despite the fact that they brought glory to this country mm -hmm. and even inspiration because after them uh, now uh, the current crop of top champs that have come up they are now uh, reaping from an industry that was pioneered by those that made perhaps nothing out of it absolutely and, and that is why as a country we should be able to find a way that we can appreciate them and support them because mm -hmm. you know they are they are I mean, look at uh, Kipchoge Keino is known all over the world. We, right. we call him the father of, of athletics. Mm -hmm. We have those who are running with him, and mm -hmm. probably they might have not been able to make it big mm -hmm. like him. Mm -hmm. But still, they are the pioneers of, uh, of athletics in this country, mm -hmm. and we need a lot of support now. Uh, going to your second question, that mm -hmm. the, what it takes for preparation for our athletes yes. who are going to run, mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, there is not much actually that they are doing at the moment mm -hmm. because... Unfortunately for this country, you remember that, you know, I mean, we have had COVID, it affected so many of our athletes in terms mm -hmm. of training. Work plans, yeah. Yes, work plans. So, mm -hmm. but I believe they are still very ready. We have seen uh, those who have been running in Europe mm -hmm. in different races. And, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I, I appreciate our, our Kenyan athletes, those who are able to remain focused. You see, unfortunately, sometimes it is difficult, and especially for us athletes, it is difficult to prepare for something that you do not know when are you going to compete. Yeah. In fact, I remember I met some people and they are like, Wilfred, you know, we do not know whether we are running uh, next year. Mm -hmm. How are we supposed to be doing it? And the I was disruption advising, that yes, came exactly. about with the spread yeah, and of And I was COVID always telling them that you, the best thing that mm -hmm. you can do mm -hmm. is to able to maybe do a lot of wrong runs and things like that. Yes. So I know, you know, in terms of... Uh, preparation and looking at the events that we, they have run out there, mm -hmm. I think that we are ready to, to run very well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now I want us to look at, at the events of that particular day and with a focus on the short races. This is an area that has been a bit problematic uh, for our men's team, that is 400 meters. 800 meters we had you and then uh, 
the king David Rudisha. Uh, but with time, we are sort of losing our grip uh, mm -hmm. in these two uh, short races. Where is the challenge and how do we cure it moving forward? Well, uh, I think we have always had a challenge, especially for eight hundred meters. You'll <laughs> always find a one individual mm -hmm. that will run for quite some time, some time you yes. know, and then one person again come. Mm -hmm. I know for eight hundred meters, we we still have a chance. Uh -huh. We have got some young athletes that are coming up. Coming up. I know they have not reached the level of uh, David Tricia, mm -hmm. Bolareng, and the rest of us that mm -hmm. we were able to be there for a long time. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that we we are going to lose hope in eight hundred meters. Mm -hmm. But you have talked about sprinters. Mm -hmm. I think this is an area that uh, Wangui, we need to really focus on. Yeah. In this country in mm -hmm. the 60s, we managed to get a silver medal in the 4x400 four meters. Mm -hmm. We have athletes that were able to get medals you know, in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And you wonder what exactly happened so that we end up uh, focusing so much on long distance races. Mm -hmm. And yet, there is something that many people doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. Short events are very lucrative. Mm -hmm. There are so many events, they are well paid. Mm -hmm. If you get those athletes who are running 100 meters, mm -hmm. the, 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 the champions, right. if you are being told the kind of money they make, you mm -hmm. will be wondering. And I remember during my time, you know, mm -hmm. they reach a point whereby an event like steeplechase mm -hmm. was actually paid so minimal. Mm -hmm. And yet these are athletes just like the sprinters. Mm -hmm. So therefore, as a country, mm -hmm. I believe that mm -hmm. we should be able to Focus team Focus. because our athletes are still there. Mm -hmm. If you look at some of the names who have been running, mm -hmm. if given a chance and given the the training, you know, uh, that is required, right. and especially because I, I remember there was some time that they were talking about guys training in low altitude Mombasa. Yes, and uh, I I think uh, earlier on, you know, um, our governor was talking about even Eldred hosting mm -hmm. a, a big event. Right. So if as a country we can't be able to focus and say that let our sprinters be training in low altitude, I believe they can be able to do very well. Mm -hmm. So we cannot afford to say that we are going to be always focusing from 5,000 meters or 800 meters, right. but we should give a chance to every kid that mm -hmm. have a potential to yeah. run any event. Any event. Yeah. And uh, there's also the contribution of personal efforts when it comes to sports. Uh, let's look at uh, Javelin, for example, which will be featured also in the Kipkeno Classic. We have the YouTube ban, mm -hmm. and uh, this particular athlete notes he taught himself. Mm -hmm. He used his money, you know, to just, just research and mm -hmm. learn uh, the ropes of the game, and he's become uh, a big name, mm -hmm. Julius Yego. Uh, so are we seeing a situation where we, we, are, we are sort of not giving enough exposure, enough support to athletes, and uh, they have to go and start from scratch, do their homework, train themselves, and then after they win, now we, now us and them meet at the podium. Absolutely, you mm -hmm. see, and that is why I say that you know we should give a chance to everybody. Right. And fortunately, we always want to focus on certain events, mm -hmm. forgetting that we have people who are, who are uh, can be able to do very well. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember uh, we had triple champa. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm losing his name. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe I'll remember later on. Right. But I, if I look at him, you know, he was able to uh, cut on. His mm -hmm. name was cut on. He mm -hmm. was doing very well in triple champ. I think even he won a medal during the um, the Commonwealth Games. Uh -huh. But you ask yourself, where did we lose focus? Mm -hmm. Why did we? Why were we, were we not able to to make it again? Yeah. So it is high time that we try to invest in these other events because mm -hmm. we need to diversify. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, Wankoi, that. At the moment, right. and what's killed, for example, uh, short distance. Mm -hmm. As out there, you know, many Kenyans are being managed by foreigners. Mm -hmm. And they can only come to Kenya to look for someone who is running 800 meters and above. Mm -hmm. They don't come here for sprinters. They, yeah. they, they go to either US, Jamaica, mm -hmm. and yes. these other countries. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I, I believe that uh, Athletics Kenya should think about exposing these guys yeah. you know i i believe that if athletics kenya for example make a request <clears throat> to uh to some of these uh, organizers mm -hmm. and say that we have an athlete that we want and they have they paid a ticket for the, for that athlete they do something for them mm -hmm. i can assure you that they will be ended in the race mm -hmm. they will have a challenge Good. because if you look at julius yeko mm -hmm. he was able to perform here in kenya mm -hmm. and then he moved to vinland yes. where he found the best coach mm -hmm. and that is why he was able to win world championships yeah. and i believe mm -hmm. that given a chance many of our athletes mm -hmm. they can be able to perform in all areas so that yeah. we diversify, yeah, we diversify and we don't, because look <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
At the moment, how many athletes are admitted to London Marathon? They say we need only four Kenyans mm. because they realize that at certain point that we send 10 Kenyans and they will make number one to 10. Mm -hmm. So they are sweeping all Clean the money. Soap. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. this, is, this is the reality. Mm -hmm. You find that there are some races some, at certain point mm -hmm. that they say we can only end at three Kenyans. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that, and we have got a plenty of talent in mm -hmm. this country mm -hmm. and we need to expose them. Yeah. The only chance that we can be able to help mm -hmm. is to have anyone that can be able to do anything to mm -hmm. perform yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the, ma the market is increasingly becoming shrinking. Uh, shrinking. Yeah. Okay. And um, earlier I was speaking to our ME Sports here, Mr. Elias Makori. His concern was on the 3,000 uh, meters triple chase. He says competition is coming in, in and fast. Uh, are you of a similar opinion? And just how should we uh, keep as a country to ensure that this particular race eh, is ours? To well, bag and retain. Uh, I, I would tell you this, you know, it has been, you know, coming, mm -hmm. long term coming. And if you look at uh, before, it always used to be one, two, three. If it happens that we have got four athletes, we mm -hmm. always. Right. We have realized that nowadays mm -hmm. we either, if we have number one, mm -hmm. number two is not our, our person. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that, you see, um, what our competitors was able to, to master is to, to come and train with us, see the challenges and see how you are able to do it. Mm -hmm. And that is why they were able to be a better uh, hardless or better, better STP chasers. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I see a situation that if we don't pull our socks, I can assure you that you know we may mm -hmm. lose a race. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing that is very important is what we call consistency. Right. If you look at the STP chasers, mm -hmm. always we have got names that are always known for, for steeplechase. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I would like to challenge our, our athletes, especially those who are young, those who are active at the moment, right. is to be able to remain focused, mm -hmm. uh, especially during the time that they are running, so that we have the mm -hmm. likes of Moses uh, Kiptanui, the mm -hmm. likes of Ezekiel Kimboi, mm -hmm. and those guys, and the uh, premium Gibruta. Mm -hmm. Because consistency brings a lot of experience. Right. You know, experience, you know how you are able to perform, mm -hmm. and therefore you can mm -hmm. be able to lift uh, the glory that we are known as a country. Yeah. yeah. And, and so come the 3rd of October, uh, Bungay, it will be a full day of track and field events. What particular event are you looking uh, forward to? On that, uh, w w which will be your event of the day? Well, uh, I have to thank, uh, you know, mm. NTV, you know, mm. that will be airing live. Mm -hmm. I, I, I believe that I uh, will be participating some way. Mm -hmm. Uh, and for me, I don't have any specific event to say that I'm looking forward to because mm -hmm. as an athlete, you mm -hmm. hardly do you focus on on uh, on on certain event. Mm -hmm. You know, when you are you are an athlete before you want to see every performance. Yes. But I think what strikes me most is I want to see how the sprinters will be able to do. Mm -hmm. We want to see, you know, the dash. Yeah. We always say it's a dash event. It is mm -hmm. always the one that everybody is participating. Yes. If you watch. Mm -hmm. uh, World events. Yes. An event like 100 meters during the Olympics, it's a full stadium. You find mm -hmm. that, you know, the whole stadium is, uh, is full and, and, and therefore it always excites people because you do not know who is going to win. You yeah. see, for, for, for most of the races, mm -hmm. After either, let's say eight hundred meters and above, uh -huh. most likely you will know who is going to win. Mm. But you for have the favorites. Meters, yeah. Yes, exactly. You have the mm -hmm. favorite, and always there is that consistency. But yeah. when it comes to hundred meters, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be always an event that is very exciting. Yeah, so I'm looking different. forward for uh -huh. for sprint, and especially the reason why is for me I came from uh, as a sprinter. Uh -huh. I was running in sprint, mm -hmm. and because you know I could not be able to get a manager out there, yes. I was forced to move to 800 meters. Of course, mm -hmm. I was able to still run very well. Yeah. But sometimes I feel that maybe if I had a chance to run 100, uh, 400 meters, which I was uh, running, uh -huh. I do not know the level that I was able to reach. Uh -huh. And that is why for me, I then to focus so much on the events that we have forgotten. Mm -hmm. And that is why, you know, most of my support... Opportunities, most, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Most mm -hmm. of my support is on those events mm -hmm. that we have forgotten as Yes, tenants. and the opportunities that yourself, you think you would have had if uh, that particular, though they were, if they were put to you and if you had an opportunity yeah. uh, to exploit them, of course. Yeah. And Mr. Bungay, before we let you go on October the 4th, yet again, NTV will be bringing to you live the London Marathon. It is a beautiful, beautiful race that everyone is looking forward to. Paint for us a picture of uh, what we expect to see come uh, the London uh, Marathon on October the 4th. 
Well, I, I think the, the king of the road, mm -hmm. you know, will definitely win the day. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that, you know, of late, because I know his training schedule, uh -huh. if you look at him, you know, he was always very focused. But again, uh -huh. with COVID, you know, he had been mm -hmm. uh, doing a lot of events, yeah. which is not uh, the best as you prepare for this race. But I think the past... Mm -hmm about two weeks or three, yeah. he has remained focused. Because mm -hmm. the good thing with Elliot is that he has the experience. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's going to meet his uh, arch rival, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Kananisa Bekele. Bekele, Governor and Mandago was saying he will be watching for that. Everyone is looking forward to that particular race where Kipchoge will go, let's say, head to head. With Kenanisa Bekele. With Bekele. All of us, I mm -hmm. think, and I, I think that will be the most watched event. Yeah. Because the last time Eliud met with Kenanisa mm -hmm. uh, was in the truck. Uh -huh. And we know exactly what happened. You know, yeah. they were always competing together. Mm -hmm. So this is legends that have now moved to the road. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the at the viewing mm -hmm. of the marathons at the moment in the wall is right. really growing. Mm -hmm. If you look at the viewing in, in terms of the track, mm -hmm. it's it's shrinking and shrinking every now and then. Mm -hmm. And that is why I, I believe that most of the people will be mm -hmm. waiting to, to see who is going to win. Yeah. I believe many people will be betting. Uh -huh. I believe also I'll be betting myself uh -huh. because <laughs> I, there's something uh -huh. that I know is going to, to happen. Yeah. What I know is we may not experience actually a world record. Mm -hmm. Uh, given the fact that, you know, again, with COVID, you know, mm -hmm. most of athletes have not really prepared very well. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen also they have changed the venue. It's not going right. to be the, mm -hmm. it's going to be a circuit. Mm -hmm. So given being a circuit, mm -hmm. you know, many people actually doesn't understand that yeah. being able to run in a circuit mm -hmm. is always the most difficult thing. And oh, like, wow. for example, when you are running mm -hmm. a full marathon, which is course, on the road, yeah. because when mm -hmm. you run a, a, a full marathon course, mm -hmm. there is a flat, you get a downhill, you mm -hmm. climb. Mm -hmm. So it gives you uh, that chance to be able to recover yeah. when you are running. Mm -hmm. But when you are running now on a, on a circuit, which is a flat course, mm -hmm. it's very detious. Yeah. So what I know is it's going to be one of the best events we mm -hmm. have watched, apart from yeah. his challenge for uh -huh. the under two hours. Yeah. Uh, being given that, you know, these are I think this will be the only time that the two will be will be meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, as you wind up, the disruption uh, that has come about in the sporting calendar because of COVID-19, of course, progressively, uh, that space is now uh, opening up and that's how we are able to have such events. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we have lost a lot in terms of revenue as, mm -hmm. uh, as, as athletes all over the world. Okay. Because if you look at most of our Kenyan athletes, they mm -hmm. would have started running in May but all races was cancelled. Mm -hmm. Some events was completely cancelled until next year. Mm -hmm. So it means there is a loss of, 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 of revenue. Yes. Uh, I know there are still some few events that mm -hmm. is still going to be continuing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which uh, definitely, you know, some of our Kenyan athletes are going to, to perform. Mm -hmm. I know marathon may not be so much affected because right. by November, mm -hmm. so many uh, events will be opening up. Yeah. And therefore, for the marathon, they were not so affected so much, mm -hmm. except maybe the first part of, uh, of the marathon, which is runs in April and May, mm -hmm. but in, in terms of, uh, but you know, I mean, there's, there's nothing much to lose, and uh, except maybe I would only get worried for those athletes who are mm -hmm. far much older. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody can be training and they're yeah. like, you know, this will be my last year. Mm -hmm. So you are not being able to perform. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, you, you lose in terms of revenue, you lose in terms of performance. You see, we were supposed to have yeah. the Olympics this year. Mm -hmm. It has been pushed to next year. Yeah with such kind of events, it mm -hmm. does affect the performance of the athlete. Mm -hmm. Because I know, for example, some uh, tennis players that mm -hmm. they were hoping to run to, 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 to play yeah. this year, mm -hmm. especially in the international uh -huh. stage. Uh -huh. And therefore, they are looking at next year being so much yeah. far. Uh -huh. So it does, uh, it does mm -hmm. really, really affect it in a, in a big way, not only in terms of revenue, but yeah. also in terms of performance, mm -hmm. of excitement that was put to it, mm -hmm. the preparation and so much. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very, very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Bungay, Wilfred Bungay, the uh, retired uh, athlete, just giving us a perspective of how an athlete feels when he is racing and in this particular uh, part, racing here in the country, as will be on 3rd of October when Kenya will be holding the Keep Kano Classic. Uh, remember, it is a world tour and that particular event has happened uh, six times. The seventh edition will be held here in the country in Nairobi and NTV will be bringing you a broadcasting that particular event live
About uh, 24 hours later, uh, we will also be having yet another beautiful event live, the London Marathon on the 4th of October. NTV will also be here to ensure you view that particular race from uh, the comfort uh, of your households. I now want to take to I want now want to take you to our Nairobi studios where my colleague uh, Joshua Makori is also there. Joshua, ikiwa takwimu zangu zinanipa hesabu sahihi. Ni kwamba ni siku 11 tu uh, ili uh, siku ya Oktoba tarehe 3 na Oktoba tarehe 4 kufika siku ambayo kutakuwa na mashindano na hayo ya riadha ambayo NTV itakuwa inapeperusha kwa njia moja kwa moja. Tunaendelea kusubiri kwa hamu. Waswahili wanasema vile vile tunasubiri kwa hamu na gamu. Uh, lakini sasa wanja ni wako Yeshua Makori. Ana umepika mahojiano bomba sana kutoka hapo Eldore tukiwa na Bingwa Olimpiki mwaka 2008 Wilfred Bungei ni moja kati ya mashujaa wa Kenya. Imagine alienda kama na hodha alafu akarudi na dhahabu. Alikuwa yani amebeba timu ya Kenya katika mabega yake. Na Mungu akamsaidia akarudi na medali ya dhahabu. Inaonesha yuko vizuri. <laughs> Huyo ni Lois ambaye kiukweli amesema moja kwa moja na Wilfred Bungei ambaye mwaka 2008 alifanya mambo makubwa kiwa na hodha wa timu ya taifa ya riadha ilo kwenda katika mashindano ya Olimpiki akarejea nyumbani na dhahabu yake ya mita 800 akiwa kinara Wilfred Bungei siku moja nitamtembelea kwake kule nyumbani yako na kasri nzito ni mtu ambaye amejipanga asilimia moja na ana taarifa na hadithi nzuri ambayo inahusiana kabisa na masuala ya riadha tukiweka hiyo pembeni ni kwamba hapa NTV tayari imekuwa sasa ni wimbo tu kwamba tarehe tatu Jumamosi Continental Tour raundi ya Nairobi raundi ya Cape Kano Classic raundi ambayo inafanyika barani Afrika hapa nchini Kenya hiyo ni riadha ya mabara alafu kesho yake sasa saa mbili unusu asubuhi London Marathon moja kwa moja tena hapa NTV kutoka mji mkuu wa United Kingdom kule maeneo ya London itakuwa ni starehe kubwa hapa nyumbani mimi nafikiri si eti kwamba ni hiyo weekend tu unakaa pembeni maruninga yako kuangalia moja kwa moja masola ya sporti hapa NTV imekuwa ni mazoea tu ni vile tumeongea za tu ladha kidogo katika mapishi yetu kwa heshima kubwa kuleta mambo mbashara alafu inanipa kumbukizi ya dimba la dunia moja kwa moja kutoka urusi tukaleta kitu hapa bila wasiwasi sasa ndo tumaamua kwamba isiku yetu ni soka tuende riadha riadha kidogo alafu ipo siku tena tutaleta mashindano ya magari labda Raundi hii ya kirejea nyumbani baada ya miaka 19 yalikuwa rejea nyumbani baada ya miaka 18 manake mwisho Kenya kuandaa mkondo wa Nairobi wa mashindano ya magari hapa nyumbani ilikuwa mwaka 2022 yakaja akaondoka yakatukwepa kidogo lakini safari hii tena kwa heshima kubwa yanarejea hapa nyumbani yameahirishwa kwa sababu ya janga la homa ya corona lakini pote ya pote maandalizi angali yanaendelea kule Naivasha kaunti ya Nakuru na hapa katika mji wa Nairobi maeneo ya Kasarani shughuli nzito Phineas Kimafia anafanya mambo makubwa kwa kiki na kuhakikisha kwamba mashindano hayo raundi ya Nairobi ikija hapa Kenya iwe ya kunoga inoge na ifane zaidi ili tupate nyingi. Manake ukiangalia kama haya mashindano ya under 20 ya dunia ya riadha yalifanyika hapa nyumbani mwaka 2017 na saba. miaka mitatu baadaye shirikisho la riadha duniani likasema pote ya pote hawa Kenya wako vizuri. Wameandaa haya mashindano kwa ufanisi mkubwa tena yaje hapa nyumbani kwa mara nyingine mashabiki walijaa hadi pomoni katika uwanja wa taifa ule sio wa taifa toka hapo continental tour kidogo inaniingia kwa akili sana ule ni uwanja wa kimataifa uwanja wa kasarani mashabiki wakajaa wakati huo corona tu kujua kama ingekuja lakini sasa imesambaratisha mambo lakini taratibu tena mambo yanajaribu kunyoka mambo yanarudi aste aste taratibu sasa ndo nataka ni mtafute huyu Lois ambaye leo hii amefanya mambo makuu sana kutoka pale mji mkuu wa Eldoret na Lois ukiwa hapo na mheshimiwa Mandago amekuibia siri nkawa nimeipata kwamba kutakuwa na screen kubwa sana kiwambo kizito ili mradi watu wafuatilie moja kwa moja kile maandiko pembeni kule NTV mbashara kutoka nyayo unaonaje hiyo siku bila shaka makori itakuwa ni furaha kiasi kikubwa maana kiwajua NTV takapokuwa inapeperusha 
eh, michezo hii moja kwa moja sasa hivi wanasema mbashara inakuwa pengine inaleta hamu zaidi mkiwa wengi maana yake lakini uh, tukizingatia uh, ma, uh, tukizingatia kanuni ambazo serikali imeweka dhidi ya marathi ya corona ingawa tutakuwa tunakaa one meter moja hapa mwingine pale mwingine pale lakini itakuwa ni vizuri ikiwa tutafika kama hapa mjini Eldoret tuna runinga nyingine kubwa hivi eh? na nataka ku, 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 pengine ku, kusema pengine hapo ndio governor Mandago ataweza kuweka uhisani wake ha, ili uh, michezo hiyo ikuwe ikipeperushwa pale na sasa sisi tulikuwa tumeketi huku chini ha, kama mashabiki kama wanariadha vile vile ambao hawatakuwa katika hiyo michezo lakini watakuwa wanapigia upato ambao wamepata ku, kupata nafasi hizo sasa na, uh, pengine nikupe picha tu ni kwamba tutakuwa tumeketi uh, ndio kutakuwa na mita moja uh, kando na jira yako lakini inaleta raha zaidi uh, inakuwa inatupa moyo zaidi kuweza kushabikia uh, uh, mabingwa wa hapa nchini ambao watakuwa katika riadha hiyo ikiwa tutakuwa tumekuja kwa pamoja na hivyo uh, tarehe tatu uh, mwezi Oktoba na tarehe nne uh, itakuwa ni weekend ya kufaa ya kufa sana hapa katika mji wa Eldoret vile vile muungano wake katika kaunti jirani uh, za Elgeyo Marakwet kaunti ya Nandi Transoia mpaka mwisho huko Turkana wote watakuwa kifuatilia kwa karibu na vile vile hapa katika mji wa Eldoret kwa vile vile tunafuatilia kwa karibu NTV kiperusha moja kwa moja pengine baada ya mbio hizo sasa mtakuja upande wa kwetu maana hapa sherehe itakuwa kubwa sana ah bingwa makore tutakuwa tunaimba tunapiga dance kidogo hapa kuna wimbo mmoja kwa lugha ya kikalenjin ambao huimbwa kila wakati kukiwa na sherehe sherehe hivi eh inasemeka ah sije bungeu nisaidie ah saya sayo sayo ah saya sayo vitu kama hivyo yesho wa makori eh tusubiri siku hiyo ya Oktoba tarehe tatu na Oktoba tarehe nne uh, but just to continue with the conversation here in studio uh, makori if you could let me just before we let uh, Alfred uh, Bongei uh, live for the day remember he is the Olympic 800 meters gold uh, champion uh, in the year 2008 uh, we want to understand uh, from you uh, Mr Bongei the issue of youth development is an issue that has been in when it comes to conversation around uh, matters sports uh, here in the country are we doing quite enough to ensure that we give a lot of support to our junior upcoming and also uh, the youth when it comes to athletics fraternity here in the country well i i think i would put it this way in mm -hmm. the past you know there was a lot of challenges whereby mm -hmm. you find that most of our kenyan athletes mm -hmm. was always training on their own yeah. but uh, I give credit to Athletics Kenya at the moment because they have a program for the youth mm -hmm. and therefore I believe that you know when it comes to athletics in this country mm -hmm. it will be able to improve because sometimes we focus so much because if you look mm -hmm. in this country we always focus on the on the on the on the, on the winnings yeah. you know we always celebrate we mm -hmm. forget where these athletes have been training for mm -hmm. for a long time yeah. mm -hmm. I think for many years mm -hmm. I, I I advocated Yeah. that why should we be putting our Kenyan athletes in a training camp mm -hmm. one man bride or championships mm -hmm. yet we do not know where what they have been doing all yeah, this yeah. period and, and most of them we get to meet with them the point of contact between these athletes and the country and the government most times is at the podium absolutely yeah, yeah. and that's so shameful you mm -hmm. know for a country like Kenya that mm -hmm. bride himself as as the the, the champions mm -hmm. and and that is why for me i've always said that you know it's very important that we focus on the youth and that's why i said that currently the athletics kenya they have a program for this youth and yeah. i believe that we should be able to have a better future yeah. and then again mm -hmm. one thing that i would want to stress is right. to diversify mm -hmm. you see because we are so much focused on certain counties mm -hmm. and yet we have other counties that we never talk about anything in athletics mm -hmm. and yet they have the potential right. if you look at Turkana for example like you you just mentioned yeah. we had polarang you know mm -hmm. we had a few number of athletes mm -hmm. so probably you know because there is a tendency that for them they were able to come to Eldred and mm -hmm. train here yes. so there was lack of inspiration for mm -hmm. those who have been left back home yes. and that is why for me on my on my part mm -hmm. i always believe that county government mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. you know should be able to focus mm -hmm. on uh, on uh, on on youth development yeah. especially in terms of sport because we all know mm -hmm. you know if we get these youths to be able to do sport we will have gotten them out of the vices in the yeah, society yeah, we will make them busy mm -hmm. so uh, for also me, tackles the issue of unemployment sports absolutely. could op could offer quite a number of career opportunities absolutely you know yeah. i mean sports is a big industry you mm -hmm. know and apart from that you know these youths because what is killing this country is 
as you said, mm -hmm. unemployment. Yeah. When these people doesn't have anything to do, they mm -hmm. will end up drinking, they will have, end up using drugs yeah. because they are there they don't have anything. Mm -hmm. So I believe that, you know, sports in this country should be diversified. Mm -hmm. Every county should mm -hmm. have both. A stake. Yeah. Uh, a stake. They mm -hmm. should have both uh, athletics. They mm -hmm. should have football. They should have yeah. any events. And maybe, Mr. Bungay, therein comes also uh, the question of sports tourism. It's a conversation uh, that has been had even at national level. But I think the problem is in implementing. We have a huge, huge industry here uh, under sports, which we could harness uh, under sports tourism. But it is something that has lagged largely been sort of uh, held down. Put, put aside. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for, for that yeah. question because mm -hmm. I, again some of us you know have always say why can't we intermarry uh, tourism and sports. Right. Many of our Kenyan athletes mm -hmm. if you know they travel all over the world. Mm -hmm. Why can't we be able to give them a way mm -hmm. that they will understand because let me tell you mm -hmm. many of us yeah. has never visited Masai Mara. Mm -hmm. They have never visited that our tourist sites in this country. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to see a situation whereby at the time that the sports ministry, for example, you know, they are investing in their marketing. Mm -hmm. Why can they invest in these athletes so that they can be able to visit yeah. the tourist site? Mm -hmm. When they are out there, they can be able to connect with so many mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. that will make them, for example, uh, to be able to talk about their country. Yeah. And that is very important. Okay. And lastly, uh, Bonabonge, the issue of doping, just touch on it lightly, uh, even as we prepare to hand over back to Nairobi. Well, I think, you know, doping is a menace. Yeah. And it's going to kill, you know, having talked all the things that we have said. Mm -hmm. Without tackling the issue of doping, I can tell you that we will go down in history as one of the best countries mm -hmm. to have had sportsmen and women, yeah. but do nothing. Mm -hmm. Because we do not want to see a situation where Kenya will be banned. Mm -hmm. uh, many people will be affected. Yeah. And that is why for me, last but not least, I would say this, the moment we criminalize mm -hmm. doping issues, mm -hmm. that will be the end of doping. Because uh -huh. nobody wants to go to jail mm -hmm. for being able to... Thank you, thank you, doping. thank you very much, Mr. Bungay Makori. Ikiwa na inipata, sasa wanja ni wako, tumezungumzia swala uh, la utumizi ama masala ya doping, ambapo manariadha huyu uh, wakitambo anasema, it is one of the challenges that we need to address as a country, even as we celebrate such upcoming events and which give huge opportunity to the country and to our uh, athletes uh, here also in the country just noting that doping is one of the challenges uh sijuko upande wako makori ni changamoto uh, gani ambazo unahisi vile vile uh, nchi ya Kenya ama wanariadha wa hapa nchini wanapitia kando na utumizi wa madawa ambayo yamepigwa marufuku kabisa na shirika la IAAF wanapitia mambo kadhaa ikiwemo wajua wanariadha ni mtu ambaye huwa anajitolea asilimia mia yeye yani ni mtu anaweka bidii binafsi amke asubuhi akuende mazoezi lakini akishinda yani watu wanapenda kuja pamoja kwake sasa kusherehekea pamoja lakini hawakujua wakati akijiandaa bungei anaweza kakuibia mm -hmm. siri hapo lakini shughuli nzito na mahojiano kuntu msalim sana bungei <laughs> Huyo amekuwa ni Lois ambaye kiukweli amepepeta moja kwa moja tena mbashara kutoka kule mji wa mabingwa Eldoret County ya Wasini Gishu kiukweli tu ni kwamba tena kwa mara nyingine nikukumbushe tu ni kwamba tarehe tatu na nne hapa ndo maskan ya riadha tarehe tatu Cape Kenyan Classic moja kwa moja kutoka uwanja wa taifa wa Nyayo siku nzima tu ndo yatakuwa nafanyika. Alafu saa mbili unusu kesho yake Jumapili, Oktoba tarehe nne, London Marathon. Makala ya 40 itakuwa ni shughuli nzito hapa NTV kwa vivyote unaipenda wewe uipendi. Ni muhimu uwashe uangalie. Manake hapa usitake upitwe na mambo kadhaa. Imekuwa ni shughuli tu ya kusherehesha tu kwamba tulitamani sana tumpate waziri Amina Mohamed kutoka uwanja wa, wa Nyayo haikuwa Nyayo awali ilikuwa tumesema Nyayo lakini tukasema pembeni tena kule katika Riyadh House lakini baadaye tu labda wakiwa tayari katika uzinduzi mzima sasa wa raundi ya Kipkeno Classic moja kwa moja utaipata ndani ya NTV sasa imekuwa fahari yangu fahari ya wote ambao wamechangia kufanikisha shughuli hii ya uzinduzi wa Kipkeno Classic hapa NTV Yosho Makori mimi ni kisepa sasa na kuacha na waziri wa elimu Magoha atakuwa nasema mambo kadhaa kuhusu kurejelewa kwa shule hapa nyumbani baada ya kusitishwa tangu machi kwa sababu ya janga la homa ya corona. Kwa sasa kwa heri hadi kwake Magoha. Here today sort of to talk about Three, two, one.
Is it safe to reopen this space or safe to reopen these uh, other spaces? I think I'll have to echo what has been said to us in the past, that we all continue to have a responsibility, individual responsibilities. As parents, I am a parent myself and I have to think about how to protect my child and how to protect other children as adults and members of the society so that we continue to adhere to the health protocols that have been put out in terms of ensuring our masks are worn and worn properly. I see many people with masks under their chins, on their heads, hanging from one ear, that we have to continue to follow these protocols. Because if we fail at following these protocols, then we are shooting ourselves in the foot by allowing the virus to continue to spread in the community. So at this point, we are at a fairly reasonable place where the amount of virus that we are seeing, the positivity that we are seeing, has gone down. How does this inform reopening? When we've had a positivity rate that's below 5%, basically what we have seen over the last several days, then it means that it's, we're probably edging to a place where we can reopen. But this is not the only measure. Other than having a positivity rate that's low, our ability to detect cases, to trace contacts, to quarantine and isolate properly have to work hand in hand with this reduction in positivity rate. Our behavior as individuals in terms of reducing transmission continues to be important. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Peter Bandi. <laughs> and as you can see, I have got all the stakeholders Arab uh, Mayo, who is in charge of parents, Sosion in charge of the, late, of the largest teachers' union. Okay, let me sorry, must be somewhere inside here. And all the other people, or oh, the one who is colorful there, with that, <laughs> the private schools, the doctors' union, the university academic, that's my faculty, the, the university academic union, the chairman of the vice chancellor's committee, and pretty much who is who in the education sector, Muga Kolale. You can't see his beard because he has covered it uh, <laughs> with the mask. The mask is making him look very young. And, uh, so now I would want to call on uh, Dr. Nancy Macharia to be the one using her mouth, which is given by God, <laughs> to tell you the decision that we have made about our wonderful teachers, who are among the very best in the world, Dr. Macharia. Uh, thank you. I want to start by thanking teachers uh, in this country uh, for the work that they have been doing even during this COVID uh, 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 season and they have been uh, assisting our students uh, wherever they are and even the community to navigate uh, this COVID pandemic and we will continue asking our teachers for their sacrifice as always because they are some of the best teachers as Waziri has said so for our teachers we ask you for your creativity the resilience and uh, the innovative sense that you have always had so that both learners and parents are assured of safety and uh, syllabus coverage uh, when schools do open. And in this regard, uh, we have uh, deliberated on this as a committee and we are therefore now asking our teachers to report back to schools on Monday, the 28th of September for the, to prepare for the eventual opening of schools. So our teachers can report any day between now and the 28th uh, of September uh, to be in schools and prepare the schools for the eventual opening. We wish to assure the country that our teachers are totally prepared and ready to support our children to recover the lost time and save the academic year that was at risk of being lost. We know our teachers will do this, and we ask all of you to support them. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I want to start with the two other things that uh, have no connection to the contemporary issue. The first one is about... Uh, the reorganization in the Tibet institutions in this country. With all humility, our technical officers have transferred certain heads of technical training institutions. 
you are not employed as a bona fide head of an institution. You are transferred to work there for a period. His Excellency the President has tasked us to re-engineer the Tibet subsector in this country. And I have been to nearly all of them in person, in addition to my other team, uh, the CS, Zab uh, has been to many, Julia Bjorn has been to many, the Director of Technical has been to many, Director General of Tiveta has been to many. And we have said in order for us to accomplish what His Excellency the President wants, we decided to transfer. For example, there are certain national polytechnics whose names I will not say here because I respect where they come from, where they are situated. I will mention the very best one, which is the Nyeri National Polytechnic, which is now the benchmark for all of them. But there are others which are not even, they should not even be considered polytechnics because there are many other polytechnics that are much better than them. So we have identified transformative leaders within that uh, sector and with all humility we are transferring new people to go and give new life. Even me, I was a headmaster of University of Nairobi for 10 years. Beyond that, it requires that even if you are good, you go to another one. So my plea, it is gentle for now, but government does not plead all the time, is that if you have been transferred to another government institution, kindly hand over to the person that has come and move on unless you have been told otherwise by my most humble self. We are human beings, we are not animals. If you refuse to move, it means there is something you are doing there that you do not want the government to know. And the government will act. So let me not hear, Dr. Juan, do you want to retire? Do you want to retire? Not yet. Let, let me not hear. <laughs> we shall treat all of them with humility, and treat every case on its own basis, but people must move. For example, those national polytechnics that look like pigsty must be brought very quickly within the next six months to look like what His Excellency the President wants. There is money, and that money must be used for what we want to. Are we together here? The second one is even more difficult in his wisdom, His Excellency the President decreed that we should be given money, 1.9 billion shillings, for desks and chairs for our children in primary and secondary schools. This is a COVID period and it's a stimulus package. So I wonder when very important people in the media start asking, or do children need desks? We already agreed that it, is, it may be important for us to even have classes outside. I myself went to no other primary school than Gatundu Primary School at one time when I was inspecting standard four. And I found that class had a shortage of almost 100 desks. So those people who sit behind desks or big offices and ask questions, please be fair to us. Children need desks, and those desks shall be manufactured. Now, my point is, first of all, I think, Dr. Kipsang, we have agreed that we extend the, the, the time for the Juakali people to have access. Is it uh, already in the press? Until Friday. So we will allow more Jokwale people to have access. His Excellency the President led the way by going to ensure that Jokwale people who are going to bid for this contract have got the capacity to provide. I have followed suit by going to so many other regions in the country and I'm going to continue during this week 
there is no law which stops us from ensuring that we ensure that the Yuakaili people have capacity to deliver these desks. These desks are not supposed to be going to a contractor who is rich, who will take the money and live in the bank. Therefore, government has decided that the desks shall go to the sub-counties. And there is a committee in the sub-county chaired by the sub-county commissioner, secretaried by the sub-county director of education, and other government people. We have said in the past that rather than thinking that we want to steal this money, we have said in the past that we shall select at least 15 schools in every sub-county. And if there are less, we shall take all the schools. The balance will be distributed. And if we take uh, Kakamega, for example, which I toured on Saturday. Kakamega has 416 secondary schools. And the ones that will benefit are 235. We have also said that every ward must get. But there is a catch because there must be a registered school. And in Kakamega, I've been told that there is one ward without a registered school. So those unregistered schools are not schools and they shall not get these desks. The high schools, having been chosen properly, will get 50 desks. And the primary schools will get 70 desks. We, as the ministry people, together with the Ministry of Interior, will ensure that this money goes directly to the Yuakali people. For example, in Homer Bay, where we have a total of 335, 333 secondary schools, 152 of them will benefit. They'll get a total of about 29 million shillings. In Kakamega, they will get 44 million shillings for the high school. But the point is this will be scattered to the sub-counties. Which part of this explanation is so difficult that we cannot understand and tell our people? I want to assure the nation that the scandal that the media is, is planning to create around these desks <laughs> shall not take place when I am Cabinet Secretary for Education. And you can take that to the bank. You can create it to sell your papers, but it shall not happen. We shall make sure that the desks are made and they go to where they are supposed to be. And in terms of pricing, ladies and gentlemen, we went through the Yuakali sector, both in Nyeri and in Nairobi and elsewhere, and we came with a competitive price, which you can go and check. 3,800 shillings for the high school and 2,500 shillings for the primary school. Why do you think this money is going to be stolen? For who and, by who and for what? By who and for what? I am aware that there are mandarins who are trying to manufacture these chairs in the back room in the hope that they'll go and seduce the Yuakali people. We are going to inspect the Yuakali because there are many sheds. Many of them will not benefit. The ones that will benefit are the ones that have capacity to make these desks. And I want to rest my case there. I hope this is as clear as it can be. Beyond that, you can write what you want. <laughs> now, Today we have met here with these uh, large stakeholders, I can see uh, the, the ones I, refer, I, I forgot to mention, the church, very strongly represented here by all the churches and all the faiths. Dr. Macharia has already mentioned to you that we have agreed, it is not Magoa, son of Magoa, I have no powers. Whatever, I'm the spokesperson for these people. So what she has mentioned to you is true. We are going to say that uh, the teachers can come latest Monday next week. If you love your school and you live near there, that's fine. Because of the localization, if you are still far, if you arrive on, on Monday, it is, uh, it is still fine. If you arrive on the 28th, as uh, the last day, it, it, it is still fine. 
We want the schools to be habitable. We have been visiting them. Most of them are in very good state. Uh, grass is uncut. Where is cleaning? There are a few schools that have been damaged. I was at uh, Kandaria while Lebelio was in Baringo and uh, my director of secondary was somewhere in Budalangi and another director was somewhere in Migori. We have been to the schools that have issues. The point that you must take home is that all children who belong to those schools have been placed in other schools as we wait to deal with those schools. So let it not be a center of conversation for 10 years. Are we together? We have also discussed other relevant issues. The one that I am empowered to tell you today is only one, apart from the teachers, and that those people in universities in the final year who are about to graduate but they can't finish their exams because they have sciences and they must go physically and do their science practicals, can go ahead and do so, bearing in mind the strict COVID protocols. So that if you are planning to graduate in December and you want to graduate everybody, we, we already allowed the doctors to do so, but we are now allowing again all the science-based groups to do so. In terms of the tertiary colleges, the mid-level and tertiary colleges, we are waiting the larger stakeholders, which will be any time between today and 28th, to concur with what we have decided. And we are going to encourage them to open with the, with the ones which had uh, examination classes first, and then they manage it from there. But I'm more focused on the teacher training colleges because we require the teacher training colleges to open soon so that they clear the students, train the teachers in time for the CBC teacher trainees, which we hope to admit in May. Now, don't go and report that I have said that the teacher training colleges are opening in this date. I don't have that power to do so. This committee report is going to another bigger committee. In terms of the basic education, which is where you have become the experts, you are telling me what we are doing. You are telling me what we are doing. But I want to tell you that this morning, we have agreed on a timetable, which you will only get if you are corrupt and you should not be alive. Because the right person to give that information is not even myself. I will take the recommendations to the larger committee and the larger committee will look at it and if they agree, then we shall send it for concurrence to the person who will then announce to you when the schools will reopen. If that power is delegated to me, which has not been, then at that time, I will summon these people and we shall come and tell you the details. So anything else you see or hear or print is a rumor. And I have charged my people here. Dr. Sarah Ruto, yes, sir. security of your office and your computers, so that uh, you don't have people snooping there. When I love, you don't change the lock. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen that, that, that's where we are and I don't know whether to allow you to ask a question but if you have any relevant question as regarding as it pertains to what I have talked about if it is about anything else again uh, in matters of BOM teachers not to preempt you BOM teachers have been paid the money went to the various sub counties, and they should have been the bona fide. And the BM teacher is described as follows a teacher trained in Kenya or elsewhere but registered in Kenya as a teacher with a teacher's service commission number and employed by the board of management to teach our children. All such people 
should have been paid by now. So don't ask that one. I've already answered you. Is, is there any other one? Asante sana. Mamunga wena nini. Eh? There's one. Yeah, but still, even if you're a yellow lady, you still say, where? The first one, I think you know the answer. The second one, <laughs> I want to refer you to our constitution. Primary schools, primary education in Kenya is compulsory and free. Which one of those don't you understand? If you as Chemutai going chooses to take your child to a private school, then you will look for the fee to pay. If you have no fee, come back to the public school, we shall take your child. It is free and compulsory. And the government of His Excellency Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta will, has ordered that we should have 100% transition. So every child is at school. As far as secondary schools are concerned, again, without any fear of contradiction, 70, close to 75% of our schools are, are day schools. Are we together? Day schools are also they are also free in case you don't know. The boarding schools, the tuition part of the boarding school is also free. So we, the only fee that the parents pay is what the children consume in the house. Are we together here? And my teachers are not animals. They are ready to listen to those parents as His Excellency the President has directed, that we should treat every case as it comes. Where is the problem? Where is the problem? And on the issue of... Uh, first of all, look at me very well. Do I look like a Minister for Public Education? <laughs> or am I a Minister for Education? I'm a Cabinet Secretary for Education. And what I have said also appertains to the private schools. In fact, if private schools were to open on their own, they would have opened earlier. But it is because His Excellency the President loves the poor children. And we said they must open together. So as we have said, they can start reporting from today. Go around and we'll find quite a number of them will have their teachers at school. But we have not said schools are opening. I am sure some of the headlines will say that schools are opening now. <laughs> Yeah, but the date you chose is the wrong date. <laughs> Whoever gave you the information is speculative. We shall give you dates after appropriate government machinery has gone through. I think it is about time uh, to call our children back to school. There was another hand, or that's all. Thank you. Yes. Oh, hey, wear mask once away. Yeah. Let me explain to you in simple English. <laughs> Dr. Nancy Macharia had said they are coming to prepare schools for a possible reopening at whatever time. Which part of that English don't you understand? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.